automatically right so dc pay uh, okay right so in the 2016 17 paper the first question is first and second question are both are based on as a data of leached soil soil so in that case degree of saturation 100% and gs the content is given right so the question porosity one question and the saturated unit weight is the so to find the porosity so if we right right if we know the uh, the simple relationship that is E equal W G S by S, right? So this is a simple relationship, right? So please stop sharing. Someone else has share. So in that case, I can't share, right? So this is uh, that relationship. So the water content is given to us as zero point five eight. And uh, GS is given as two point seven by degree of saturation. Here it's one, it's completely saturated. So simple calculation. If you will solve, you will get zero point six one. So that is your sorry, not zero point six one. That is your um, uh, you can find the value for uh, your white ratio, right? So to convert this into porosity, right? You know, white ratio and porosity has a relationship of n over one minus n, right? So white ratio can be related in this manner, right? Ratio is volume over volume of solid. Similarly, uh, it is volume of void over total volume, right? Simply, we have to connect to connect these two. We can. Um, Uh, do it in this manner, right? So from this equation, we can write one plus e equal to one. One, so please, Mike. I can't have, do this uh, while doing both the things, right? So one plus e. So this further gives one plus e is equal to vs plus vv by vs, right? So one plus e is equal to uh, total volume V by V S, right? So after finding this, right, and this one, you can divide uh, both the things, and you can come to this relationship in. So I'll divide first one by second one. So in that case, e over one plus e gives. Uh, v, so that is n, right? Once you know this relationship, you you convert this and find the. Right? So by solving this equation, now you have to simply solve this. So n will zero point six one, right? So that is the first part. Right? So the answer option is B. Right. Uh, the next part. For the next part. They are asking us to find the saturated unit weight. Right. Gamma saturated. So this is the first part. And for the second part, gamma saturated. Right. So there is a, a relationship for saturated. Right. You can write uh, G S plus S into E over one plus E times rho when That is row W when S is equal to one, right? So here S is one. So then G S plus E this equation changes into this form. Right? So now you have to simply substitute the values and find out gamma saturated. Or else, if you remember this equation, that is gamma is equal to one minus n into G S n times 
plus n times g. Right. So if you remember, you can uh, use this equation, right? But most of the time you do remember this part, right? So this is generally used for your bulk density, right? So when S is zero, then you can find the dry, dry density. When S is one, you find the rated one, right? So for situation, it might change, right? Uh, now if you substitute the value of this, the answer is, here it is 16.314, right? So the option is option A. Three two equations. One is this one, and one is this one. Right? If you remember these two, you can see and right. So that is the first two. Right? So the next question. Right, question number three. Right. So question number three is a statement question. We'll see. So which of the following statement regarding the right? So it's based on hydrometer test. The mass passing agent F to the mass of dispersing agent affects the person passing, right? So in that case, to re uh, remove that the density correction, right? So we used to measure the density of that control solution with the variation of the temperature for each reading you are taking. If you remember your practical correctly, for each and every reading, right, you will be taking a temperature in, uh, and uh, your yeah, density reading from your hydrometer and uh, to provide a correct control solution and uh, to provide that correction to the particle size distribution, right? So mm -hmm. in that case, right, particle size is wrong, right? It affects the person passing, right? option A, right? So they're asking the question is to select the answer as C. So please, uh, so if you are not going to do that, I will find the person and remove him, right? Him, who is it? Right, is there any issue with the sound? Hello. Is there any issue with the sound? I see. Yes, sir. Uh, not clear to clear to uh, Yeah, we can't hear you uh, properly. Also, we can't see the Right, uh, right. Give me a second. And also, me a second. can't see the screen. Yes, we can't see the screen. How about now? I can't see the screen, sir. Uh, no, yes. uh, okay. I have, okay. I have, yeah, now, I, I have okay. stopped sharing the screen for the time being. How is the sound? Is sound the clear? Sound is clear? It's okay now. It's much better. Okay. Now it's okay. Yeah, the voice, voice is good. Yeah, it's fine now. Yeah, okay. So I'll share the screen to somebody's mic. Right, okay. So I'll share the screen now. All right. So now, can you all see the screen? No, sir. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, uh, now, okay. Now it's okay. Okay, right? Okay. Uh, 
what about the first two questions i think you you could uh, handle those questions right? okay okay right so in the third question we can uh, right to be frank with uh, without with using only the first statement that is a statement we can completely come to the conclusion of the question so here i will again explain that they have stated in the statement that mass of dispersing agent affects the computed particle size right so it does not affect the computed particle size right it affects the percent passing because when you add the dispersing agent to the soil it differs the density of the soil and all it changes the density of the entire solution to prevent that to counter that effect we do a density correction in find the density correction we will be taking a temperature reading and a yeah. density reading from the control solution right so this is done if you remember the practical you all know this so in that case it affects the partic uh, percent passing not the particle size a statement is wrong so if you remove the options which contain a you can remove option a option b option d and option e so only thing which is removing is sorry remaining is option c so the answer for this question is obviously option c so if you are handling this in your examination you can just mark c and you can move to the next question right so we will quickly go through what are the other options Right. So statement B states that the viscosity of water is influenced by the temperature of the solution. Yes, right. If temperature increases, viscosity decreases. Still, is there any issues? Because I hear some uh, uh, background talking. Oh. Please make your mics. Right. Okay. So the next statement C. It says the hydrometer reads. Right, so it does represents the uh, density of the soil so, uh, soil solution. It usually happens. That is the thing, right? And the final statement: at a given time, the percentage of soil in suspension. represents the percent passing right at a given time the percentage of soil in suspension sir it is only uh, measure the uh, percentage of uh, settlement soil settlement percentage of pass right uh, so uh, the statement d there is an contradiction here right so at a given time the percentage of soil in suspension represents the percent passing is uh, uh, it's not percent passing uh, percent i cumulative uh, cumulative so we'll see so if you talk with me i can't do this right so if you have any doubts wait for that and we'll discuss it later right so we had the same issue in the last time right? so while i was doing someone else was talking so i couldn't do that properly right so remain silent and we'll talk about that right uh so the person uh, the soil uh sorry the percentage of soil in suspension represents the percent passing let's see so if uh, so that means the soil in the at a given time
So you hear that this is, seems to be a contradiction, isn't it? So the percentage of soil in suspension still has not passed down a particular size, right? So in that case, uh, it does not represent the person passing, isn't it? So there is a contradiction with statement D. The percent of soil in suspension represents the percentage passing. Right, there's an issue with the yeah. So in that case, this MCQ has no answer. So B and C, A is wrong, right? But D has a small contradiction when it comes to the person passing statement. Right? Uh, now we'll, we'll discuss what was that a person wanted to say something. So, uh, what is the reason for the uh, uh, statement A is wrong? So statement A, you are not, you are not going to do any correction for particle size. Right? So the dispersion agent will change the density of the solution, right? When you mix a different agent. So there is a reason for using dispersion agent, right? So dispersion agent will re, uh, individually remove the particles from one another, right? So they avoid foc flocculation. It is a deflocculating uh, agent, right? So to make the particles settle individually, we are mixing dispersing agent. To the, uh, okay. Could I, could I tell? Could I tell huh? someone, sir? Could I tell someone? Okay. What? What? If the dispersion agent uh, uh, into the uh, water, then uh, it change the uh, density of the uh, liquid. Yes. Oh, yes. Then, then uh, F seven six uh, six five nita IV. Uh, yes. Frictional yeah. force. It 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 may yeah. be change. Mm hmm. Then uh, the settlement of particle may vary, you know? Yeah, then it, it so, so to counter that only, you are doing a density correction. Uh, then uh, if the particle settlement is very, uh, that also uh, uh, affect the computer particle size? No. That's not going to do anything with uh, particle size. So if you see, if you if you think properly, right? So when the density is changing, to counter that, we are changing. So sorry, when uh, density is changing, the rate of settlement changes. Uh, it might settle fast or it might settle a bit slower. So that is the thing that is going to happen, right? So but your particle size won't do anything, right? particle size. Right? So there is not a thing. If you want to think that uh, much more in a simple manner, uh, think about the equation you are using, right? So there is no anything for dispersing agent with the particle size, right? So it completely relies with the person passing. Uh, the B and C is not an issue. The issue is now in the statement D. Soil in I, settlement, no? That, that, that should be uh, uh, become as uh, soil in settlement represent the percentage of us. So we'll see the percent of soil in soil suspension Represents the percent passing. 
excuse me can i tell you something yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. in our book uh, page number 32 uh, uh, you mean the uh, new syllabus the, one or the old syllabus one new syllabus one okay on okay of, very top of the page mm-hmm. it says that soil in suspension mm-hmm. that means percent passing so i think ah, okay. uh, the yeah. statement is correct yeah i think so yeah okay we'll see we'll just think about that and we'll just discuss why that is correct hi right? okay uh so i assume right uh, so my explanation would be now once the uh, soil has settled right so how will how the settling would occur let's say there is a larger particle and there is a smaller particle right so which would settle first obviously the larger particle would settle first right and you think about sieve right so if you think about sieve the larger particle will retain first that means the amount of soil settled at the bottom is similar to what it is retained at the top of the sieve right so if it is larger particle the at the sieve it will be at the top right and when it is coming to the bottom the particle size will get smaller smaller and smaller and smaller right so that is what happening in sieve right so if you compare these two things you can see if the particle size is larger it should settle first and similarly if it is something like in a uh, Uh, sieve it should retain first so what happens the smaller particle has to pass down right so in hydrometer it's a bit different the larger particles goes down first and the smaller ones remain in the suspension right so the person passing is remaining in the suspension and the person retained has gone to bottom right i think you would have understood it with comparing to sieve analysis any issues if i want to say in tamil or singhala excuse me which paper is discussed now been discussed now 2016-17 question number 3 so obviously statement d is correct isn't it so why did you say uh, statement d is correct Sorry. so now you think right so think about person passing means right so person passing and all are usually defined with cu right when it is compared with cu you can easily understand what is person passing okay okay right Uh, so if you take a larger particles and smaller particles in hydrometer larger particles settle first right it has gone down it is in the bottom right so what is remaining smaller smaller particles are remaining right so we are somewhat calculating the sizes of the particles such that here uh, like through sieves right we take a certain certain sieve if it is passed through that sieve we say that as person passing if it is retained in that sieve we say it as percentage retained right so in hydrometer the particles which settle down are larger particles so they get retained in a sieve so what is remaining in the solution in the soil suspension are the percent passing they are the ones which will settle at last smaller particles will settle at last larger particle will settle at first so at the first level itself larger particle will get retained and the other particles will pass down similarly it happens right until the smallest sieve so the smallest particles smaller smaller ones they will be in the suspension the larger will be settling down so what have settled down is percent retained what is on the suspension is percent passing just yes, yes. right so compare the this with sieve right so in the there are two point of view to handle the same cq 
one is doing this much of discussion right so this much of discussion is useful when you are preparing for the exam right so if you are doing this as a examination paper don't bother about statement d you know that statement a is wrong so in that case option c is the answer tick the answer and move to the next question don't waste time right so that is idea for your Hello. examination yeah someone's voice i heard a voice amma inge ipo idile suspension la irikirathu person passing da solring hydrometer la oh yes 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 hydrometer la hmm suspension la retain a irikirathu person passing yes. person passing da சரியா <laughs> what you got it thank you okay. okay right so i hope everyone would have understood that statement issue so for the answer for that question is option c and uh, we'll move to the next one next statement one right so which of the following statements are true regarding the uc test right so now it's a uc test right so the uc test measures the soil strength with respect to total pressure right so that is correct right so we don't have any means to measure the pore water pressure in a uc test right in a uc test is a quick test we do it quickly right within few minutes we do then complete the test and we don't have any proper apparatus to measure the pore water pressure within the sample so this is entirely based on total stress right to measure the pore water pressure you have to do a triaxial test right so it's a different setup so here statement a is correct right if statement a is correct either our answer would be option a option d or option e right so the next the average effective stress increase with the applied deviatoric stress right so the average effective stress increase with the applied deviatoric stress so you know what is deviatoric stress so deviatoric stress is the difference between the your principal stresses right so in uc test you will be getting only one principal stress right so that is at the on the lateral direction you don't have any principal stress that is zero right you don't apply any uh, lateral stresses so there is only one thing uh, that is your major axial stress and the uh, other stress is directly zero right so here uh, you can't much speak about deviatoric stress and all right you don't have a minor stress right uh, option c states that the uc test should be performed on a saturated clay soil specimen yes obviously right it should be performed on a saturated clay soil specimen uh, i did discuss about this uh, elaborately in the my previous discussion also right if the soil is not saturated the sample will get consolidated and sometimes you even can't fail the sample it might develop strength right within itself if you want further understanding on that there is a large uh, uh, there is around uh, i think 15 20 minutes conversation about this in the previous uh, last year soil discussion video right you can follow that there uh, the shear stress acting on the plane of failure is equal to maximum compressive stress you know that is wrong right so what is the compressive stress that is half of the uh compressive stress that the shear stress is half of the compressive stress you you know to draw the mohr circle failure envelope if you see we usually denote the compressive stress as qu our shear stress as cu our cu would be qu by 
So statement D is wrong, right? So B and D are wrong and A and C are correct. So in that case, option E, A and C only. So that is the answer for that, right? So the next question five, uh, which of the following statements are true regarding the MIT soil classification system, right? So in MIT, under MIT soil classification system, they are saying that a fine grained soil should have 100% passing 0 0.063 millimeters. You know, if, we, if there is only 50%, then we can consider as more than 50%, then we can consider it as fine grained soil. So that is wrong. Statement A is wrong. Uh, liquid and plastic limit tests are performed when the fine percentage is less than 5%. Obviously wrong, right? We, we, we perform liquid limit test and plastic limit test for entirely based on uh, fine grain soils. So if it is less than 5%, uh, we do not consider them as fine, uh, fine grain soils, right? So B is also wrong, right? A and B wrong means the only option remaining is C and D only, right? We'll see whether it is correct, right? Medium sand range is between 0 0.212 to 0 0.6. Obviously, you know that is correct. And uh, SWSC, that is well-graded sand and clay sand with clay, right? Has a fine percentage of 5 to 12%. Obviously, when the percentage is between 5 to 12 we tend to use dual symbols. So that symbol is possible, right? So option C is the answer. C and D statements are correct, right? So the next part, question number six, right? Uh, figure below states the stress strain behavior of a soil. Which of the following statements are correct, right? The graph represents a consolidated undrained triaxial test, right? We'll see that. So these are the two graphs, right? There is a graph separately for volumetric strain with vertical strain. If you see that graph, there is a change in volume, right? If there is a change in volume, there should be drainage. Without drainage, you can't have a change in volume. So in that case, the statement A is wrong because they are saying it is as an undrained triaxial test. So that is not possible. That is a, This is actually a graph for consolidated drained triaxial test. So statement A is wrong. Right? The statement B, the volume of the specimen at failure is greater than its volume, initial volume. Right? If you, if you see this uh, volumetric strain, the volume has reduced. It has started from zero and it has gone to minus three. So in that case, the volume has reduced. So, but they have saying uh, it is greater, right? So statement B is also wrong, right? The next statement is the residual shear strength is 250, right? If you see the first graph, the deviatoric stress versus vertical strain graph, the maximum stress it has obtained is 250. You can straightforward, you can see it. So state, statement C is correct. Finally, statement D states the modulus of elasticity is 30 megapascal, right? If you see again the first graph, it, at the initial stages, the soil behaves as an elastic, in an elastic manner. They have drawn the tangent. And if you find the gradient of that tangent, it is nearly 30 megapascals. So that statement is also correct. So option C and D are correct. So is answer C, right? So that is question number six. So question number seven, uh, it's regarding zero avoid curve, right? They're asking which other statements are true. It relates soil moisture content to the dry density of a saturated soil, right? It is correct, right? So zero avoid curve states there is no any air. So the soil has to be completely saturated and we relate the moisture content and the dry density of that hypothetical soil. There is no any soil without air, right? So points lying on the curve represent air, water, and solid. That is wrong. There is no any air in that, right? 
uh, the curve depends on specific gravity of soil, right? Obviously, it de depends on the specific gravity. If you if you see the equation, rho dry is equal to Gs over 1 plus E into rho W. It does depends on the uh, specific gravity, right? The compaction curve intersects the zero airway curve at higher water content. No, it may get closer, but it never intersects. If it intersects, there should be a soil in such manner. We can't find a soil in such manner which has no any air in that, right? So statement D is wrong. So A and C are correct. So option C is the uh, answer for that one, right? Uh, question number eight, right? It's based on your visual soil classification and practical. So it states that a medium dilatancy reaction is observed in a low plasticity silt, right? In a low plasticity silt, it's a silt with very low plasticity. So obviously there would be a rapid reaction, right? Not a me medium dilatancy reaction. There should be a rapid reaction. So statement A is wrong, right? So fine sand show low plasticity. Yes, it's possible, right? And high drains, uh, dry strength and high toughness of thread near plastic limit is observed in a clay with high plasticity. Yeah, we know when plasticity is high, there is high dry strength and high toughness. Statement C is also correct. Dry strength of a soil is due to the presence of adsorbed water in the soil matrix. Yes, right? Strength is developed due to that adsorbed water, right? When there is high plasticity, there will be high amount of adsorbed water and it develops a high dry strength. So B, C and D are correct. So option B, right? And uh, the next statement is about Tesagi's one-dimensional consolidations theory, right? So parameter A, V, right? Parameter A, V. It's a coefficient of volume compressibility, right? Uh, if I'm right, is computed for a given load increment in settlement versus time graph. No, right? It is computed in void ratio versus uh, effective stress, not in log scale, void ratio versus just uh, effective stress, right? So A is wrong. Primary consolidation is the settlement caused during the dissipation of excess pore water pressure. Yes, we know that. Secondary consolidation is when there is a rearrangement in the particle uh, matrix. When the particles rearrange, that is secondary consolidation. When pore water dissipates, that is primary consolidation. Immediate settlement is when the air expels and the sample immediately settles, right? So those are the things in that. So B is correct. Parameter AV for a given stress increment can be computed from the void ratio versus effective consolidation stress curve. Yes, right? So statement C is correct. Tesagi's uh, consolidation theory assumes that KV decreases for a given vertical effective stress increment. No, it assumes that KV is constant. So that is a drawback in his theory. It assumes that KV is constant, but actually what happens, KV decreases, right? So as it settles, as the particle rearranges and compacts more, consolidates more and more, KV decreases, but the theory assume it as constant, and there are a few other assumptions as uh, only one-way drainage, that is two-way drainage in the application, in the direction of the load application, and clay is homogeneous, and there are a few other. So statement D is also wrong, so B and C are correct, right? So option B, right? Uh, the next is based on rock mechanics. Uh, I think uh, new syllabus people don't have this rock mechanics part. Uh, the rock mechanics testing is completely different from soil um, testing, right? So we'll I'll just quickly give an idea, right? Uh, they have said about a curve, right? So there are a few curves, A, B, and C. Uh, the statement A state that the curve A yields its un unconfined compressive strength. You know, if it is unconfined, 
we apply the stress only in one direction so the minus stress should be zero so the curve should be b not a so statement a is wrong okay. curve b represents a uniaxial compression compression test so if this is it is uniaxial right uh it might be b right but it has stated the values are marked as undrained test and all right so it is bit uh, confusing when it comes to b statement b right statement c states that curve c represents a biaxial tensile stress yes so one is at compression state curve c is on the negative side so it might be a tensile stress so it is possible right no effect due to excess pore water pressure is considered right? yeah here we don't consider any pore water pressure things right you will uh, do this much more when you come when it comes to geology and uh, sometimes uh, in geology i think the new syllabus they are including some more things when it comes to rock and level 7 there is another subject for especially for uh, geology and uh, rock mechanics part so here new syllabus students don't bother much old syllabus people just go through your uh, sessions right the answer for this is option c right c and d statements are correct right uh the next thing question number 11 again this active pressure passive pressure thing new syllabus students they don't have this section right this is they have shifted it to geo geotechnics i think uh the all syllabus people have this we'll quickly move through that one also right if a sandy soil behaves as an isotropic material isotropic material means in a certain direction the properties are same that is the every that is isotropic right the force exerted by the sandy soil on a retaining wall is greater than the force due to its active earth pressure right when it behaves as an isotropic material it right it does exerts more pressure because the properties are same right in a certain direction right so in that case the force would be more right uh, the b part the force exerted by a sandy soil on a retaining wall at rest situation is greater than uh, the force due to its uh, active earth pressure right you know it's the other way around right uh, in the active uh, pressure it might be more right uh tension cracks on the cohesive soil may decrease its shear resisting against sliding yes when there is tension crack uh there will be an increased uh load from the tension crack to the sliding surface right so uh, it might fill with water so in that case there will be a low pressure development so it enhances the shear stress shear force for failing right so the resistance would be decreasing so tension crack enables more risk in failing right so this statement is correct it uh, it decreases its shear resistance right it is correct for sandy soil a significant wall movement is required to develop a passive resistance compared to the wall movement required to develop a active force yes to develop a passive resistance there should be a much more uh, movement right uh, to do this sometimes uh, this might be a uh, bit difficult to understand but when you uh, go through the book and when you do some designing part when it come to geotechnics you will be having this idea much more clearly but uh, don't bother much uh, due to this active pressure and passive pressure concept right now right so to passive pressure in the sense there will be only a small fill when it comes to retaining walls and those things so there should be a high movement right so when designing retaining walls we usually neglect the passive resistance though there is a small fill beyond the retaining wall we usually neglect that and design the uh, passive, uh, retaining wall for safety measures right so in this case option d is the answer d is the answer for that one right uh, finally there's another question common for both 
people right so which of the following statement are true regarding one dimensional consolidation of a clay soil degree of consolidation is the ratio of settlement at a given time to the primary consolidation settlement yes it's obviously co correct right so it's the definition for degree of uh, consolidation right initial settlement takes a shorter duration compared to its primary consolidation yes. initial settlement takes happens very quickly right uh, so b is also correct excess pore water pressure may dissipate vertically and laterally no so in one dimensional consolidation right it is said as one dimensional consolidation so it dissipates only vertically so that is one dimensional consolidation right there are lateral consolidation may also happen right there may be lateral draining you will study that about those things in uh, level 6 geotechnics right so here that is if you are asking they are asking about one dimensional consolidation so in that case water dissipation is only vertical it happens only vertically right so dissipation right so c is wrong so coefficient of consolidation should reduce with the applied effective stress yes so by applying the load the consolidation rate actually decrease because the soil is developing strength right for each load increment the soil is developing the strength so by you applying higher and higher loads it slows down right so if you uh, travel in katunayaka express way nowadays they are testing it right so actually the testing in the sense the consolidation process they are testing the consolidation process right the express way is open now for years right so they would have started the construction a few years back right so the the initial estimation and all they are checking whether the soil has achieved the strength right now even after opening the express way right so nowadays it's going on in katunayaka express way right so it takes very long time yes you can't accelerate consolidation in uh, in field right it's very difficult right so it reduces that is uh, the thing in last year paper uh, so the answer for this is c right excuse me can yes. i have i missed your first and second questions what are the answers for the first and second first and second for question number 1 the option is b and okay. uh, for question number 2 the answer is a and uh, do we have a possibility an mcq repeating for another year uh to be frank if you see the papers of few years one or two mcq might have been repeated but you can't guarantee it right so we can't rely on that right you you might get a shade of the same mcqs sometimes if you practice few mcqs when you are handling your paper uh, you might get a hunch uh, i have seen this somewhere something like that but you it's uh, the chances are very odd that you get the same mcq for the uh, other papers right sometimes you may get one or two but not all the 12 right so we can't uh, uh, assure that right Uh, and for part b of course uh, do we have any fixed uh, six topics lessons uh i don't think so sir we'll be asking from any fixed part right uh okay. so when any it comes to the last year paper um the 2017 18 paper if you see that the paper is entirely based on uh, tricky parts right uh except the first two questions first question is from uh, tri axial testers tests your tri axial those tests second is your uh, simple uh, stress variations and after question 3 question 4 those things you don't have in the new syllabus right question 3 is based on roller passes question 4 is on method of slices question 5 is retaining wall question 6 is uh, Uh, rock permeability and uh, few consolidation and retain him sorry uh, shear failures those things right uh, so you can't uh, you can't predict right to be fra uh, frank you can't predict but out of the six questions you will at least get two or three questions based on your practicals right it may be consolidation it may be uc test 
it may be your proctor test whatever it is it may be your hydrometer or it may be uh sieve analysis anything right there are nine practicals right out of your nine practicals i guess two or three questions at least two or three questions will be from your lab practicals because uh, new syllabus is entirely based on practicals there is no any other additional theory like old syllabus so you have to be thorough with your uh, lab practicals and the theory uh, for that pra lab practicals right Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 Okay. Ah, uh, you all can't access, right? So you can find from your fellow students who are doing this subject for the okay. first time. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Final thing, guys. Then the C part of the gajal ringa. C. 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 Put it under the ringa. Oh, C. Put it under na. This is one one-dimensional consolidation. Pati jane keli ke kranga. Ah. Uh, uh, Apna number one-dimensional and da oru disa ila dial the consolidation na rakras dhanne. அப்ப டிசிபேஷன் எங்கால நடக்கும் அதாவது வெர்டிகலி மட்டும் தான் நடக்கும் வெர்டிகலி மட்டுமே ஓ லெட்டரலி நடக்க போறது இல்ல அதான் உண்மையான ரைட் ஹேண்ட் தான் பிளங்கலனா ஹலோ ஓ என்னது லெட்டரலி அண்ட் மெட்ட பக்கம் ஓ அதாவது வெர்டிகலி லெட்டரலி ன்னு சொல்லக்குற கிடை திசையில ஆ அப்ப ஒரு பக்கம் நடக்கறவடிய அது போல ஓகே 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 ரைட் சோ वी विल क्विकली मूव टू தி நெக்ஸ்ட் இயர் பேப்பர் தட் இஸ் 2015 16 பேப்பர் சோ ஹியர் अगेन சிமிலர் क्वेश्चंस ரைட் தே ஆர் ஆஸ்கிங் us to find the dry unit weight and the degree of saturation right so we will quickly see that so so how to find the dry unit weight right i'll quickly share the whiteboard so you you can do the calculation hi right. so the first part they are asking the dry unit weight so we know rho dry right so rho bulk right if you write rho bulk that is gs plus is into e over 1 plus e times so rho dry is gs rho w over 1 plus e only space so is zero here right so you have to simply substitute we have given gs as 2.712 right and the road of w in no no it's 9.8 over 1 plus e is 0.75 right so this right so when solving this the answer is 15.248 right okay uh, right so to find the degree of saturation we know e equal to the w g we can't see the screen we can't see the screen right So S is equal to to W. Ah, uh, Irene, you should be able to see the screen. Oh, okay, now it works. Hi. Right. So, so by E. So here W is given in percentage. W. So remember, some student made this distance. sorry made this error that w is given as 15 percentage but while you are substituting in the equation you have to substitute in decimal format right into 2.72 over e is given as 0.75 right? so you can find answer is 0 Point five four 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 in 
fractions, right? So you have to convert to percentage. So 54 point. Uh, we have a problem in Four your screen. Percentage, right? I had some percentage calls. Most of the people had subtract uh, fees. The screen, right? screen has changed. So yes. that is first two question, right? So second question, all right? Uh, just now I shared the The screen was hanged for a while and we couldn't see anything you wrote. Screen and I opened the paper now. No, we didn't see your screen shared ah, properly. I think there's, there's a network error, I think so. Can right. you see the answer you have wrote? Uh, now can you see the paper? No, I have sh shared the screen. You should. I uh, uh, don't worry about that. I'll upload this to the channel. You can see that at the time. Uh, the equations use we already had in the previous paper also. The equations are these two equations, right? I'll quickly show that. Right? Can you see now? I have shared the screen. You should be able to see this. Okay. Okay, now we got. Yeah, so these, this is the only two equations we are using. One is this one. Other one is this one, right? Right, so you, you can yeah. figure out that question, but you can have a rough idea where, what would be the, so simply here to substitute the values and solve this. First two questions are usually a bit easy based on the same calculation part. Right. So we'll discuss from question three. Right. Hello. Yes. Uh, can I ask a question? Uh, uh, is primary consultation and secondary consultation have happen simultaneously? Yeah, can uh, happen. And also, may initial compression and primary consultation happen simultaneously? Yeah, we so can. Both are correct, correct? Yeah, it can happen, right? Uh, to make the calculations and uh, the understanding things easier, we usually consider that they are happening separately. But in in the actual uh, scenario, especially primary consolidation and secondary consolidation, they can happen sim uh, happen simultaneously. At the same time, when there is poor water pressure is getting out, there is a dissipation in poor water pressure. At the same time, the particles also can rearrange. Right. So for only for the understanding part, we are considering that as separate things. Right. Think about the you know, common sense. Right. Now, let's say primary consolidation happens when pore water pressure is dissipating. Right. So the soil particles won't wait. Uh, let first the soil uh, water all dissipate and finish it up. Then I'll settle in such manner. Soil won't wait. Right. So soil will start to uh, the particles will start to rearrange themselves, right? They will happen simultaneously, but to make it easier, we used to consider them as uh, uh, separate things, right? For the theory basis only, but actually they can happen, they will happen simultaneously. Right, can you see the paper now? Right, question three, right? Question three is based on that equation. So they are asking few statements. So the first statement they are saying it has GS is a dimensionless parameter. Yes, it's correct. Right, it's a dimensionless parameter. And parameter E always represents a value of zero to one. No, it's wrong. Wide ratio can have a value greater than one. S quantifies the fraction of water present in voids. Yes, that is correct. S is degree of saturation is the volume of water by the volume of void, right? And parameter W represents the value 0 to 1. That is wrong, right? So some might think why parameter W is, uh, can be, uh, how you are saying that parameter W will be greater than 1. So it can be greater than 1, right? So especially when it comes to peat, right? There's a soil type you would have studied in the uh, plasticity chart. There's a special soil type called peat or peaty soil, right? 
so when it comes to that particular type of soil even in sri lanka in if i am right in kerala bitia right when they did the highway right uh, projects they had found uh, soils with uh, water content over 100 percentage around 105 the such values right Uh, the students who are doing geology might know that because uh, one of our lecturers was involved in that project uh, mr mahesh was involved in that and there might be such values right so we can't say that water content maximum value is 100 it might be more than 100 so especially when it comes to peat soil right so statement d is not that case right so that's also wrong right? a and c are the uh correct options so option e right right the next thing is about liquid limit and all a liquid limit soil consistency changes from liquid to semi liquid yes we know that at plastic limit the soil consistency change from semi liquid to semi solid not solid right when it changes to solid it's completely different right there is another limit shrinkage limit right so here that is wrong at plastic limit it changes from semi liquid to semi solid so b is wrong if 13 mm groove closure occurs at 30 blows water content of the sample is more than liquid content no it's less than liquid content because you are required to uh, produce high number of blows so usually it is 25 right at 25 that is liquid limit so if it is more than 25 you have to you have applied more number of blows so that means the soil is dry now that's why it is required more number of blows to close that 13 mm groove right so water content is less right so statement c is wrong right liquid limit of a soil varies with its natural moisture content no for certain type of uh, soil the liquid limit is same right so if the statement is true think about that if we take a clay soil right if it has 10 percentage 20 percentage 30 percentage water content at different different places for the same clay it might have different different liquid limits so how can we classify that clay that is not possible isn't it so if it is a certain amount of clay, a certain type of clay it has a certain liquid limit and a certain plastic limit so if according to natural moisture content they do not change that liquid limit and uh, plastic limit and all so d is wrong only a is correct so answer first answer right so next they are asking which of the following statements are true uh, the soil shows a rapid dilatancy reaction has high clay content wrong right it might show no any react no reactions right so it is wrong a plasticity test measures the soil's ability to absorb water to clay minerals yeah you can say that right a high plastic soil has high thread toughness yes a high plastic soil has low dry strength wrong so b and c are correct those are straight forward statements right so you can understand if you know the uh, visual soil classification practical properly if you have done that you you know this easily so b and c are the correct statements the next thing uh, which of the following statements are true 50 g of mineral kaolinite adsorbs less water than 50 g of mineral montmorillonite right so you know montmorillonite is a high plastic clay so kaolinite is a low one so it adsorbs less water so statement a is uh, statement a should be correct isn't it uh next the plasticity index is the water content range representing the semi liquid state yeah plasticity yeah you can say that plasticity index is the difference between plastic limit and the liquid limit right so at that state the uh state of the clay is semi liquid right next a sm uh soil is a silty sand right yes it's a silty sand right simple soil classification a ch soil has a plasticity index greater than 50 yes it should have a plasticity index of 
greater than uh, 50 so answer all statements are correct so state option e right uh, class visit index greater than 50 uh, that is a uh, little limit greater than 50. right greater than 50. Yeah, liquid limit is also should be greater than 50, right? Then only you can say it as high plasticity clay, right? Yes, sir. Plasticity index greater than 50. Uh, P, P, I, right, we'll see. So I can't remember the chart exactly in my mind. That is liquid limit, not plastic index. So plastic index, uh, plasticity index, if it is it may, it may less than 50 plasticity index, but liquid limit uh, should be greater than 50. For yeah, liquid limit is obvious. So if it is should be CH, obviously liquid limit is greater than 50. That is right. Here they are saying that plasticity index greater than 50, right? That That's, is not. Sometimes. Okay. It may yeah, be sometimes, a... yeah, you are right. Sometimes it might have a plastic index less than 50 also. Right, it might have a plastic index less than 50 also. CH soil has a plasticity index greater than 50. That is not always true. Sometimes it might have plasticity index greater than 50. Sometimes it might have plasticity index less than 50 also. If you see the chart, you can... Uh, uh, figure it out easily, right? Yeah, you are right. Now, so from, this is the not... chart, from the chart, can we just uh, say the least uh, possible value for plasticity index is 20 with that yeah. intersection part? Yeah, you can apply the... There's an equation for A line, activity line, right? If I remember correctly, that equation is uh, 0.8 times uh, liquid limit uh, minus 20, if I am right, right? So I'll just quickly check it, right? The equation is uh, 0.73 plastic index PI equal 0.73 times. Right? I'll write it down. So this is that equation, right? So PI equal 0 0.73 into liquid limit minus 20. So this is the equation. So here, if you apply 50 for the liquid limit, you can figure out what should be the plastic limit. Right? Uh, sir, excuse me, sir. We can't uh, see the screen. Yeah, I have shared it. I think there's some sort of issue in sharing the screen. Right? I think there's some delay in uh, receiving the screen. No. No, no. The screen is shared. Right? I have shared. So it is shared now. Uh, but we can see it. By, uh, it's, there's a big delay in the screen. There is taking uh, some sort of lag. Right? So now you can see there is an equation, right? This is the equation. I have wrote down the equation. If you substitute 50 for the liquid plastic index. So in that state, in that, that is not always true. It is true for a certain extent, not always. So we have to say that statement D is wrong. So in that case, A, B and C are correct, right? So option A. All right, so we'll move to the next question. All right, question number seven. So again, UC test, they're asking about UC test. The test is performed on cohesive soil only. Yes, it is performed on cohesive soil only. All right, A is correct. Then uh, the test yields the shear strength parameter C dash, right? They are saying the shear strength parameter C dash, right? We'll see that there is a small 
uh, issue in that notation, right? So what does C dash means is not properly uh, given, right? So the test gives a zero friction angle. Yes, it is correct due to the undrained condition. It gives a zero friction angle. The test is performed on a fully saturated soil sample, right? That is also correct. I we had this same statement previously. So A, C, and D ops is absolutely correct, right? So the issue here is the unconfined compression stress gives us a parameter called Cu, that is undrained cohesion. But here they have not properly given what is C dash, right? Because there are a few parameters, right? So C, what is C? C is the cohesion under total stress. There's another parameter C dash, which is usually we say it as effective stress. Under effective stress, we use this dash notation, right? So if we consider about our usual notation thing and take this as C dash, then that is not the case. We get Cu, undrained condition, right? So B statement is a questionable statement here. So in that case, the most proper option is D, right? So there is an, an issue because of this notation, to be frank. Right? So if it is Cu, then okay, we know that correctly. Since it is C dash, there's an issue. So I am considering this as wrong and I'm taking option D, right? So that is the issue in that particular statement, right? Right, the next thing is a small calculation, right? So that is based on uh, coefficient of permeability of your test. The coefficient of permeability was determined for a sandy soil. The soil specimen is 150 centimeter long. The mold is mold diameter is 15. The volume flow is 390 occurred in 80 seconds under a total head difference of 40. They are asking us to find the permeability. The simple equation Q equal AV, right? So Q equal KI, right? So you have to find Q. Right, Q is equal to volume by time. So 390 by 80 is equal to K. We don't know K, K into I. I is the pressure difference by length. So it's a fairly straightforward calculation, right? We'll see because of this lagging thing. I don't know whether you can see the screen, right? And and, uh, excuse me, if it is yeah. possible, like, uh, not for every question, if it is possible, like uh, for theory parts, like uh, can you just refer that uh, topic from the textbook so that we can just go through it later, like? Uh, so this is the case, right? So you can't go through one particular topic and understand soil, right? So this is my yeah, personal yeah. opinion, uh, right? Uh, so not yeah. that means uh, that is the uh, uh, that is like a uh, rule or something like that. That is my personal opinion when it comes to soil and hydraulics, right? Okay. So when it comes to these two subjects, you have to go through this properly in such manner, right? Let's say somebody is coming and asking my name, right? So if they ask my name without any hesitation or without any thinking, I would say my name, right? So that is common for every person, right? So you okay. have to go through soil and hydraulics in such manner, right? If you, if there is some question, you it should come from your brain, right? If you have that much of understanding, it would be very easy when you are going to level five and six, right? The students who are doing level five and six, they know how soil and hydraulics plays a major role when it comes to higher studies. Higher studies in the sense when it goes to your degree level, right? So now you are in diploma level, most of the students, some might be doing level five and six subjects who are specially, who have done geotechnics and who have done mechanics of fluid. They know how uh, good uh, the lecturers and at that time they, you will understand why that methods were good and why soil should be studied in that manner, right? So don't focus, my personal opinion, don't focus on one topic and don't prepare for one topic. 
prepare for the entire subject when it comes to soil and hydraulics. Now hydraulics has over, the exam is over, right? So those who face the hydraulics paper, they know the struggle, right? Now you would have understood the struggle, right? So I got some reviews from um, my friends. So I know the issue. So if you prepare for one particular session, you can't uh, get uh, proper marks, right? I won't say that you can't pass the subject, right? You can pass the subject, but if you want to get a proper understanding and if you want to uh, go to your higher levels with a proper base, uh, don't follow that idea, right? Uh, okay, sure. I think if you are a new syllabus person, uh, you are having around 16 sessions, right? If I'm right. Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, very small. <laughs> myself, I just attended uh, the exam the last year, but uh, the top okay. paper was totally it was totally different from whatever we got uh, the papers earlier. Like yeah, so that is that is uh, compare um, the reason is uh, ourselves, right? I can't uh, re reveal more than that in here, right? Uh, the paper paper got tough because of the students, right? So I don't know what will happen uh, this year, right? So we are the, so now you, uh, I don't think so. It will be much tough this time, right? I don't think so, right? So you prepare well for your laboratory. So if you, if you know and uh, thoroughly with your lab practicals and your theory behind the lab practicals, I, uh, you can at least do three questions from your part two and around nine, eight to nine MCQs, right? Okay. So this is more than enough to just get through the paper from all syllabus, right? So other than that, in all syllabus, we have footing, we have slope, we have retaining walls, we have uh, testings, we have rock part. There are so many other things. That was the issue in the old syllabus. But it, when it comes to new syllabus, uh, they are a bit lucky when it comes to soil and bit unlucky when it comes to higher levels because they have to study the basics again, right? Okay. Uh, so better to focus more on laboratory things and spend some time to the other part, not entirely uh, getting the full knowledge in the other part. Don't go that far. At least go through the lessons and keep a small idea. So in that case, you can at least uh, give some part, uh, do some part questions and take four marks or five marks out of uh, one, uh, one or two certain questions. So that will be also helpful in your final grades, right? Thank you, sure. Okay. okay. If it is possible, like in between, Pins, yeah, if I remember, so to be frank, I I can't remember the topic names and the session, right? Um, uh, yeah, if I if I can, uh, I'll say the sessions. Okay, right. Thank you. So can you all see the screen now? I, I, yeah, yeah, we can see. Yeah, okay. So here the equation we need is Q equal K I. Right. So Q is the flow rate, so 390 by 80. We don't know K. I, our head difference is 40 by the length 150. Uh, K into A into I, sorry, into A, right? Area is also there, sorry. Right, so here, what is the area? The mold is given to us as pi by four times. 15 centimeters or 15 squared. So here after that, you have to solve this. So K, the answer for this I got is 0 0.143. So one, uh, that answer is not in the paper. So there's no option there. I think there might be some issue while printing. Uh, so that is the part so this is also from your constant head practical session 17 if i am right in the old book i don't know the session in the new book right does the game have a unit here uh, centimeters per second ah, okay, centimeters. so okay. i have used everything in centimeters and uh, seconds so the unit final answer would be in centimeters second right so be careful while doing the you handling the units huh? Right, so the next part is fairly simple, right? Uh, in situ bulk de density of a field compaction was found to be 18.5. Its natural moisture content is 14. 
the maximum dry density uh, found to be 17.5 at an optimum moisture content of 16.5 relative compaction achieved right so you they have given the maximum dry density from the laboratory test right so you know that part the only part we have to calculate is the field dry density to find the field dry density we usually perform a test called sand cone test right there is a small portion in the uh, textbook right uh, in the old book session 16 uh, i think so right uh, so sand cone test right so they have given the bulk density in the field as 18.5 and and the water content in the field in the in situ water content is 14 so if you know these parameters you can find it is so this is the part so row, you have to divide your bulk density by unpure water content so 0.14 not divide you will from uh, that instance ti so this is the field dry density they have right in the laboratory they have achieved 7 point they are asking the relative compaction so relative compaction is 16.23 by 17.1 in so get around 95 percentage right so this is in in uh, so i'm not going to discuss that much more briefly because it's the competent thing the achieving this 95 percentage some of these things the persons who have worked in road projects right uh question one sorry question number so in by a given right so i'll draw the figure here right so in x direct it's 360 and in y direction it is 190 right so x direct sigma x and sigma y right So I'll just mark it. It's three hundred and sixteen one direction, and in another direction it is hundred and ninety, and there is a shear stress strength stress of seventy five. Right. Clockwise. This way. Right. So you can use your more circle knowledge and find. They're asking us to find the minor principal stress. Right. Right, so if you draw the Mohr circle, right, you will get a Mohr circle something like this. So one value is 190, another value is 300 and 16. Here, this is 75, right? This is 125, so you can find in the center at 365 by 2, so it is 275. You can find the radius, right? Object is uh, you have to find this distance, right? The radius is a, sorry, this distance is 85. You have to build up to this based on your strength of normal material, not so radius R uh, is square root of 80. Right. So in that case, minus stress sigma minimum is two hundred and seventy-five minus right. That is so answer here. Right. So this is a very simple question. Drawing more circle. I think you all. So I move to the next part. Question number eleven. Quickly, uh, due to the time constraints, uh, which of the following statements are true regarding hydrometer state? Uh, hydrometer test uh, meniscus correction is sensitive to temperature changes. No, we take only meniscus correction once, right? That, that is an error caught in the hydrometer instrument where we can't see, right? That is our issue, right? That that doesn't change with the temperature. So A is wrong, right? person passing is computed based on the mass of solid settled at the bottom right uh, so here 
it is computed based on the mass remaining in the solution. We discussed this again in the last uh, paper. Settling velocity depends on the viscosity. Yes, settling velocity does depend on the viscosity. Right? If viscosity high, settlement is uh, velocity is low. If viscosity is less, settlement velocity is high. So statement C is correct. The test enables us to determine the percent of clay friction. Yes, we can determine the percent of clay friction. So statement C and D are correct. So answer C. Right. The final is again based on one dimension consolidation test. So mass of water at the end of the test is required to determine the initial void ratio. Yes, you need to, uh, you need the mass of water at the end of the test. If you remember your lab practical Excel sheet calculation, you would know this, right? It is assumed that the initial degree of saturation is equal to one. No, we don't assume that, right? We calculate the degree of saturation. What is the degree of saturation initially, right? The initial void ratio is computed based on an assumed value of, assumed GS value. No, right? Initial void ratio, we don't assume such values. Without any such values, we can calculate the initial void ratio. Again, you have to be thorough in your one dimensional test Excel sheet calculation. If you would, please, if you have not done this uh, calculation manually, if you have time, please do that calculation manually so that you will understand each and every calculation and you can answer this question easily, right? Uh, and the D part, yes, the smallest division is 0 0.002 mm. So in that case, statement A and D are correct. So answer is D, right? So I think I have to point out a small point here. The students who are doing this uh, subject for the first time, to be frank, you all are lucky in one sense to face your viva in online manner and you are unlucky in another uh, side because you couldn't uh, see how our lecturer asks a question, right? If you would have faced this viva in a face-to-face -face manner, you you would have got an idea how he asks a question and what is his expectation, right? What is the answer he's expecting? That thing you would have gained the knowledge if you would have faced uh the viva in a one to one session right obviously you would have had some time with him in the in the lab but that is a group viva that is a entirely different scenario right the one to one session is uh it's a there will be around 10 or 15 minutes time uh thing that that would have been uh highly beneficial right uh, so you are a bit unlucky in that, right? So someone has asked what are the answers for question number 8, 9 and 10 in 2015-16. So that is the paper we are doing now. So question number 8, there is no answer. For question number 9, that is answer D. And for question number 10, it is answer A, right? So I'll quickly move to the 2014-15 paper, right? Uh, they have given the saturated unit weight as 19.2 and they are asking to calculate the theoretical hydraulic gradient value, right? So the theoretical hydraulic gradient value is, you know, that is gamma saturated divided by gamma water minus one. So you have to divide 19.2 by 9.81 and subtract one, right? So that is the simple calculation. You have to remember these equations. If you remember your constant head practical session 17, if I am right again, right? So the answer is 0.96, answer A, right? Uh, the next part, during a hydrometer test, the solid particles are considered to fall at constant velocities, right? Yeah, we do assume that. We assume that and we do the calculation, especially when it comes to particle size distribution equation. I don't know how many of you all have tried to prove that equation. Uh, I have tried 
and i could prove that because a bit lengthy proof so i am not going to prove that now if you have time just try to prove that equation that 0.00531 that equation right so at that case we assume it as constant velocity a hydrometer reading represents the specific gravity of soil in suspension right uh that is also true right uh it is assumed that solid particles in the soil suspension are not attracted to each other yes right so to counter this only we are adding dispersing agent and all right all right so so we are not assuming right we are not assuming we are giving some measures for that so in that case assuming is the word assuming because of this assuming thing that is wrong right we are adding dispersing agent to break the attraction right a uh, hydrometer test measures the size distribution of particle sizes smaller than 0.002 no it's smaller than 0.063 not 0.002 so c and d are wrong a and b are correct right so a soil has 8 percentage of soil fraction passing 0.0 sorry sorry for the first one a is the answer right 0.96 yeah 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 okay so it's a simple calculation right you have to divide 19.2 by 9.81 that is gamma saturated by gamma water minus 1 that is the equation for critical hydraulic gradient okay okay thank you okay uh so for question 2 okay question 3 a uh, soil has 8 percentage of soil fraction passing 0.063 mm save so the soil type could be right so it is definitely dual symbol right because it's 8 percentage of fines so in that case a and c can be neglected right so d and e cannot be the answers because the major group should be same right here the one in one uh, in the d part they have said sand and gravel in e part it's gravel and sand right there cannot there isn't such dual symbols so only possible answer is b right so the answer is b right uh the statement uh, fourth statement uh kaolinite is a clay mineral with chemical composition which of the following statements are true it is a crystalline form of a silica tetrahedral sheet and an aluminium tetrahedral octahedral sheet so to be frank i am very poor in chemistry right uh so i can't remember the theory based on this right uh i assume that is wrong right i don't know this octahedral tetrahedral thing <laughs> sorry about that uh, uh so uh, i just keep statement a to a side it displays medium to low plasticity that is true right so that kaolinite is a low plastic uh, clay it displays a medium reactance uh, reaction to dilatancy right so it may be it uh, displays so due to low plasticity it represents a medium reaction also correct uh, kaolin slurry is used as mud drilling when constructing board cast in situ piles so i think uh, in that cases i think they are using bentonite slurry not uh, kaolinite slurry right so b and c are obviously correct right so in that case uh, i think the answer should be b sorry about that a statement i am not familiar with chemistry part so I, it's available in the textbook just uh, go through that uh, i'll move to question 5 then okay which of the following statement are true regarding liquid limit and plastic limit so liquid limit is the water content of the soil slurry when it changes from liquid state to semi liquid state right so statement uh, a is obviously correct volume of soil slurry remains constant at water content lower than its plastic limit no it's remain constant when it is lower than shrinkage limit so b is wrong liquid limit is a measure of soil's ability to adsorb adsorb water right 
so you can say that for a certain extent yes uh, the natural water content of an over consolidated clay is near to its plastic limit so the liquid the natural water content of an over consolidated clay is near to its plastic limit yes so it is over consolidated right so it is already well consolidated so in that case the consistency would be much the particles would be packed and it would be much more in a semi liquid state to semi solid in that uh, state because it's over consolidated you i think you all know what is over consolidated and normally consolidated things so i think that is true right so here uh, b is wrong other things are possible so i think statement d is correct b uh, is absolutely wrong we know that right in the previous one uh, it, it is a crystalline form of silica tetrahedral sheet and aluminum octahedral sheet mm -hmm. it says uh, yeah. so just uh, i just went through that note there but okay. it says uh, it is a, it is a layered silica uh, mineral with one tetrahedral sheet of silica linked through mm -hmm. oxygen to one uh, one octahedral sheet of aluminum octahedral So, so that means the, the, in between there is some sort of oxygen, right? Yeah. Uh, so we can't say that this is correct, right? But that's not crystalline. Ah, uh, so it's not. Ah, uh, crystalline, right? So very, yeah, yeah. very sorry. I am very poor in chemistry, right? <laughs> so I don't remember those part, right? Uh, okay, right. So you can go through and find it out in the book. So as per the reference from the book so thank you for whoever that person was so a is wrong so we were correct right so statement uh, sorry question number 6 uh, which of the following statements are true regarding classification of engineering soils liquid limit differentiate organic clays from inorganic clays uh liquid limit differentiates organic clays from inorganic clays so we we'll see that whether it is possible or not i think uh, it is not possible with liquid limit how to say whether the clay is organic or inorganic right so organic and inorganic you know that uh, carbon presence of carbon hydrogen sir, and so those things excuse me sir and yeah. under the, under the a line sir there is uh, yeah. uh inorganic silt and organic uh, soils are uh, in in a same group yeah yeah so that is false yeah so you can argue this in a different manner also right so have you all uh, gone to some paddy fields or where they are doing vegetable uh, uh, cultivation and all uh You yes. also can find uh, clays, right? You can find clays, especially these organic clays are black in color, and there will be order, right? Bad order, right? So whoever performed the visual soil classification practical in the laboratories, if you remember, you would have got a white or grayish color clay, right? It had a pleasant smell, right? If you, uh, I don't know if you all could remember that smell, it has a pleasant smell, right? So that is a purely inorganic one. so when it comes to organic definitely it, it has a darker color and it it mostly it has a order right so with liquid limit that is not possible you can't differentiate li with liquid limit liquid limit with liquid limit you can say whether it is high plasticity or low plasticity but you can't say whether that is ch or oh or M, uh, that part you cannot say right uh the next thing liquid and plastic limit tests are determined when gp soils are classified no gp means poorly graded gravel right so that is gp so in that sense uh, that is not possible right uh the next thing silty sand have it find fraction from 12 to 50 silty sand has its fine fraction between 12 to 50 right so again uh, silty sands right so there is a definitely high percentage of silt right 
so in that sense it may be the fine percentage may be between 12 to 50 right and the final statement is a line differentiate clay from silk that is obviously correct so c and d would be the better options for this one so state uh, option c and somebody has asked what is the answer for question 5 for question 5 the answer is d a c and d are correct answer is d all right so now question number seven right uh, which of the following statement are true regarding rise of capillary water in a soil uh, said c increases with decreasing average particle size right so when average particle sizes decreases the capillary rise can increase the rise could be much higher right so this part you have to think uh, a bit critically when the particle sizes decreases the packets of pore pressure that there will be smaller packets and this can rise due to the pore water pressure within the soil it can increase to high uh, heights right uh, and sir, uh, the, a, 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 I think A is correct Particle size food in the Maitula for a vermel, the Padavali on the Persagmel, a post in the Dali. Oh, you devil Kuravarkum, a price when they in a say alarm. And I'm not going to wear the pole on the neck. Ila, on Zoligan, average particle size than a Persa than a Zoligan. Oh, average particle size in a thousand Zoligan, in a thousand rice food under the town, what a statement. Ah, sir, sir, okay, 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 and I'm up another clan. Oh. 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 Uh, the B statement said C increases with increasing rise strength. Increasing rise strength. So I think that is also possible, right? So when high rise strength means it should be some sort of high plastic clays, something like that. So in high plastic clays and such type of soils, the pore spaces are very small, right? But it has high porosity, right? So this is a um, uh, how to say this is a, some sort of uh, paradox, right? Though clay particles are though very fine, some might think it compacts well, and there won't be any sort of porosity within that, but Clay has high amount of porosity. That's why it absorbs more water and it keeps it within itself, right? So in such cases, when you place a capillary tube, the rise would be much higher, right? Because it has a high amount of pore water within that and with a high pressure, right? So it will increase to high heights, right? More heights, right? And said C depends on the surface tension of the so yeah, obviously, right? So it depends on the surface tension and it does not depend on atmospheric pressure, right? There is no any relationship with uh, for capillary rise and um, pore pressure, right? Sorry, atmospheric pressure, right? So A, B and C are correct. So option A, right? So next is regarding the Proctor test. Uh, which of the following statements are two regarding the standard Proctor compaction test? Compaction below optimum moisture content causes mass of solid to increase with water content, right? So that is true, right? So below moisture, uh, optimum moisture content, mass of solid also increases with mass of water, right? So that is true. Uh, for given moisture content, distance between the compaction curve and the zero air void curve represents the amount of air voids. Yeah, that is true, right? So it's a fairly straightforward question. At high moisture content, sandy soil plot closer to zero air void curve, right? So they, if you see in the, there is a chart in your textbook. If you see that, you can find out the answer for this. I think this is true. Right, and in situ compaction is carried out at optimum moisture content. Yeah, they try. They in situ means at the site, right? In the naturally, right? They try to carry out this in the 
optimum moisture content but we cannot achieve the 100 percentage uh, relative compaction as in the laboratory that's why we have some st standards like 90 percent compaction 95 percentage especially those who have worked in road projects they know uh, this 90 95 percentage thing much uh, more clearly right i don't have any experience in road projects uh, so i but i have a slight idea about this i think who have worked they know well right so i think statement e is correct here right and question number nine right so here the figure below shows the influence factor below a corner of a rectangular area a two meter four meter uh, footing bears 50 kilopascal the bearing stress uh, along the center line of the footing at one meter depth right so the question is at one meter depth at the center line, but the chart is given for a corner. So we have to somewhat convert that to a corner, right? So we'll try to convert that. So give me a second. So how to convert that into a corner? Right. So to convert that into a corner, we have to divide that in a certain manner. Right. So give me a few minutes so that you can see the screen. Right. So is the screen visible to you all now? Yes, please. Yeah, it's visible. Right. So they are asking us to calculate the pressure at this same right even for corner, right? So somewhat we have to bring this center of this large uh, fourteen to a corner of a small section. So I am considering only this one. So what is the dimension of this one? This dimension is 2 meter and this dimension is 1 meter. So we have to calculate this M and N for this highlighted area only, right? Right, for this highlighted area only. So in that case, we get M equal 1 and, sorry, M equal 2 and N equal 1, right? So M is at, is at is 1 meter, the depth is 1 meter. Directly, these are M and N, N, right? So M is 2 and N is 1, right? So we know those values. Now, again, we have to move to that uh, chart that they have given in the question. Right, so what is the chart states, right? So in that chart, you have to see in the x-axis, you have the M values and in these curves, those curves give the N values. So you have to find in M, our value was two and in N, our value was one. So both the curves intersect to give a value of I is it as 0.2, right? So the I is it value from the curve, we can find it as 2, right? 0.2, right? So our I is it is 0.2. So I is it is 0.2, right? So it's for one, yeah, right? So one rectangular portion. So see four rectangular portions. So you have to calculate it once and multiply by four. So our pressure would be 50 times 0 0.2, uh, 10 kilopascal for one square. This is for one portion. Right? So for the entire footing,
for entire 14, this should be 4 times 10, it is 40 kilopascal. So, so that is the trivial. So I have multiplied by 4 because all four areas are same, right? So these all four rectangles are same dimensions. So if you have different dimensions, you have to find the Q for all four uh, different dimensions, one differently, uh, different uh, M and N values, and you have to add up all those four. In this case, since all four are same, we have multiplied, right? So if they are different, do it separately. So answer is, um, Question number, sorry, answer is option E, right? So somebody has asked is question nine is for all syllabus, right? What is question nine? Question nine, no, that is in both syllabus, both uh, new syllabus and uh, old syllabus, right? Uh, question number 10, uh, again, one dimensional test. So vertical dial measures settlement in 0 0.02 millimeter increments. That is correct. Specimen is subject to both horizontal and vertical effective stress. That is wrong, only vertical. The specimen is subjected to vertical strain only. That is correct. Primary consolidation is expected to occur within 24 hours. So that is our expectation. That is also correct. So except B, all three are correct. So A, C, D are correct. So um, option D. Right, so that is 10th. So question number 11 uh, is based on uh, uh, the figure below shows the variation of stresses with depth for a saturated clay soil element dx dy dz subject to a vertical compression. Right, which of the following statements are true? Excess pore pressure dissipates at the top and bottom ends. Right, so that is correct. Right, that is what we do there. The initial excess pore water pressure distribution is considered parabolic. Yes, that is considered parabolic. Yes, uh, water movement at the center is greater than the movement near the top surface. So uh, no, right? It's an even movement, right? At the end of primary consolidation, the effective vertical consolidation stress increases by delta sigma v. Right? Uh, I think so. That is also wrong, right? At the end of primary consolidation, the effective vertical con stress, no, there is still another portion, secondary consolidation and all, right? So A and B are absolutely correct, right? I think both old syllabus and new syllabus, both people have this diagram in their book, right? It's based on uh, uh, consolidation theory, Tesagi's theory, right? Yes, so. Yes. Yes. Uh, what yeah. is the answer, answer for 10th tenth, tenth, uh, question? 10th question, give me a second. Question number 10. Uh, it's uh, D. A, C, and D. All three are correct. Right? So don't bother about the answer, answers. Right? Um, 12th one. Final question for this paper. Figure below shows the more circle plot in terms of effective stress. The effective friction angle is equal to fairly simple. You have to calculate the radius of the circle first. So radius is 660 minus 250 by 2, right? So you have to subtract and find it. That is uh, 250, right? See 255, right? 660 minus 250 by 2 is 205. Right? And you have to find uh, the coordinate of the center that is 660 plus 250 by 2. So that gives 465, if I am right, 400, uh, 455. Right? So if you have to find the angle that is sine inverse 250 by 455. It's a simple geometry question. So answer is. Uh, option one, right? Option one, if I'm right, sign inverse 205, right? 205 divided by 455. Oh no, option second one, 26.8 degrees, right? So, option B, 
right so answer for 11th is uh, a and answer for 12th is b right so that's all for this paper right so the next year 2014 right again see this first question is again based on the same uh, calculation right uh, bulk unit weight is expressed in such manner and they are asking you to find the saturated unit weight so if you want to find the saturated unit weight you have to apply s equal 1 right apply s equal 1 and you have to find uh, find the gamma saturated also oh, fine when you are calculating that there will be an issue when it comes to e so you know e is equal to w g s by s again s is equal to one so in that case e is equal to w into g s so you can simply find out right so g s plus w g s over one plus w g s into gamma w so the answer would be first answer 15.6 right so fairly straightforward right so the next is about liquid limit so during liquid limit test if the standard groove closes by 13 uh, at 15 blows the soil is considered to be in plastic state no the soil is considered to be in liquid state it's because it is closing very quickly so the consistency is like liquid right so in that case it is not in plastic state right so a is wrong uh, a soil with liquidity index 0.5 is considered to be in plastic state. So what is liquidity index? Liquidity index is uh, W minus, that is natural water content minus liquid limit, right? Uh, sorry, uh, natural water content minus plastic limit over plasticity index, right? So in plastic state, right, if the soil is in plastic state, uh, the natural water content is, should be higher than uh, plastic limit, right? So, I'll quickly share the board and I'll, uh, write it down so it will be easier for you. So we know liquidity index is natural water content minus plastic limit over liquid limit minus plastic limit. So this is the case, right? So in plastic state, right, under plastic state, We know natural water content is less than liquid limit and greater than plastic limit. Right, right. So if we substitute the plastic limit for uh, water content, we will get a, a, the minimum value as C0. And the maximum, right, this is at so if the liquidity index is 0.5, so it is possible, right? It is possible that plastic state is possible, right? So the next statement at water content will This is low string case of volume. That is absolutely. Uh, there is some problem in your True. volume, right? Uh, <clears throat> is uh, a soil a soil tent? Yeah. It sorry. Uh, I can't hear. A clay soil. Sorry, sorry. I can't hear, hear you. What is the issue? I can't hear the uh, sound sir, clearly. Uh -huh. You can't hear the sound clearly. Uh, how about now? All right, okay, then not. Okay. Right. 
So statement D states that at a water content less than plastic limit, the soil has a stiff consistency. Yes. So if water content is less than plastic limit, it's the consistency is getting thicker and thicker. So it has a stiff consistency. That is also true. So answer is B. Right. So the next thing, uh, question number three. A uh, soil has 14 percentage of soil fraction passing through 0 0.063 millimeter C. Uh, the soil type could be, right? They're asking the what could be the soil type, right? So if it should be uh, well graded, you know, the soil uh, fine percentage should be less than 5 percentage. So in that case, A is not a possible answer so you can omit a uh, in d part right uh, option d th there is no any such soil classification as mc so you can't say that if it should be ch high plasticity clay there should be more than 50 percentage so that is also not possible again when it comes to poorly graded one uh, again uh, it, it it contradicts with the fine percentage, right? So the only possible answer is S. Right? So that is the option C, right? So you all should be very clear with that large chart, right? Uh, so that chart you can find in session nine in the old book, if I'm right. So not session nine, session eight, right? Uh, so again for poorly graded, right? Uh, the fine percentage should be zero to five. So poorly graded also can be omitted. So the only possible thing is S SM, right? Uh, question number four. Uh, which of the following statements are true? A rapid dilatancy reaction is observed in po poor silt. Yes, that is true. When compared with poor fine sand, pure silt has the fastest dilatancy reaction, right? A high plasticity glass, clay has high dry strength. Yes, that is also true. The toughness of a three centimeter, three, three millimeter diameter soil thread uh, near plastic limit is quantified based on the pressure required to roll the thread. Yes, right. That is the def definition for the toughness test, right? And finally, a soil with high plasticity can hold more water molecules within its soil matrix. That is also true. So entirely based on visual soil classification test. So answer is E. Uh, question number five. Which of the following? Sorry, yeah. Uh, what's the answer of uh, question number three? Uh, question number three, uh, answer is uh, C. C, thank you. Okay. Uh, question number five, which of the following statements are true regarding hydrometer test? So hydrometer reading reflects the density of the suspended particles. Yes. So obviously it uh, reflects the density of the soil suspension, right? Error due to adding dispersing agent is corrected by the reading, uh, corrected by reading the hydrometer when it is dipped in the control jar. Yeah, that is the density correction we are measuring. Uh, settlement time depends on the specific gravity of the uh, soil. Yeah, it depends on the gravity of uh, specific gravity of the solids. Right. Uh, the diameter of the particle in suspension decreases with increasing time. Yes. So high, larger particle will settle first and the smaller particles will settle later. So the size particle size is decreasing with time. So all the statements are true. Right. So question number six. Right. Which of the following statements are true regarding constant head permeability? Excuse test. me. Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah. In question number five, a mm -hmm. uh, hide, uh, at a given time, the density of a some suspension no. Hydrometer yeah. reading reflects that at a given time, 
otherwise it is wrong no so they have not mentioned that you are measuring the density throughout the time there is nothing like that right so when we when we doing a practical when we got a certain time no yeah yeah that's correct you are measuring at certain times at that yeah, time so you are getting the flow density of the suspended particles right ah oh, okay so you are correct the density varies throughout the time that's yeah. right right but we don't measure that throughout the practical right we measure at certain times at that certain time we get the certain densities right so okay. uh, don't uh, complicate the question by overthinking right yeah that is another thing right don't overthink uh, some certain uh, statements uh so in that case you will confuse yourself and finally the answer sometimes you won't find the answer right yeah okay okay um uh question number 6 the hydraulic gradient across any two points along the spoil se- spoil specimen is considered constant right so we do consider it as constant right the average velocity through the soil increases with increasing velocity so increasing viscosity if viscosity increases the velocity decreases so statement b is wrong coefficient of permeability represents both soil matrix and the uh, permeating fluid coefficient of permeability represents both soil matrix and and the permeating fluid yes due to this both these parameters coefficient of permeability can change right for sandy soil coefficient of uh, permeability k20 is proportional to e squared that is wrong it is proportional to e cube uh, i don't remember the person's name uh, it's in session 17 if i'm right some sort of coloration right the name i can't remember it correctly what is that coloration hessian's coloration right so that is e cube not e squared so a and c are correct option d right next is regarding uh, which of the following statement are two regarding falling head permeability test so during a falling head permeability test during the test a constant head is so that is in the name itself they are saying it is falling head so head decreases not constant so statement a is wrong right ah sorry so constant head is maintained at the outlet right so at the outlet it is constant at the inlet it decreases right so a constant head is head at outlet is main yeah so at outlet it is constant so typically if we take the outlet as our datum it is usually zero right so according to datum it might change huh? not always zero according to the datum and if the datum is at the outlet so in the, in that case it is zero so if someone take a different datum he will get a different value right uh, the said test is suited for fine grain soils which are is permeable yes obviously that is correct during the test hydraulic gradient across the small specimen remains constant no that is wrong the hydraulic gradient decreases because the total head at the inlet decreases so the hydraulic gradient also decreases uh, the measured coefficient of permeability could be in the order of 10 to the power minus 6 uh, somewhat it can be in that order right uh so a b and d are correct right so next uh, thing uh, which of the following statement are true regarding proctor test right so compaction below optimum moisture content causes air volume in the specimen to increase with increasing moisture no that is wrong the air volumes uh, would decrease right 
Compaction beyond optimum moisture content causes mass of solid in specimen to decreasing with increasing moisture content. That is true. Compaction beyond op optimum moisture content causes mass of water in specimen to increase with increasing moisture. So compaction beyond optimum moisture content causes mass of water in specimen to increase with increasing moisture. Yeah, that is also true. A well graded sand shows greater compaction when compared with poorly graded sand. So this is also true. Right? So these statements are directly giving the explanation. So that's why I'm not explaining anything. So they are directly the explanation. So the only thing we have to figure out whether it's true or false. So except A, all three statements are correct. So answer is B. So for question number five, uh, Question number five, the answer is E. All statements are correct. So question number six, uh, answer is D. And for question number seven, the answer is C. And for question number eight, the answer is B, right? Uh, and for question uh, nine, so again, it's based on Tesagi's one-dimensional theory. Parameter MV. So parameter MV represents the variation of settlement versus for a particular load increment, right? No, right? So the parameter M coefficient of compressibility, if I am right. Right, uh, uh, represents the variation of settlement for it doesn't that values, right? So statement B, the unit is correct. That is uh, kilopascal inverse one, right? You can find out from this equation itself, right? Uh, and for statement C, the said consolidation theory assumes KV decreases during the consolidation process. No, it assumes that is constant. We already saw that. The said consolidation theory considered the soil is fully saturated. Yes, that is a assumption. So B and D are correct. Option D is the answer. Answer is D, fourth option, right? So which of the following statements are incorrect, right? This is incorrect and I think this is not available. Question number 10 is not there for new syllabus. For all syllabus, uh, we have this one. So ultimate bearing capacity is the maximum capacity that causes the soil uh, beneath the shallow footing to undergo shear failure. Yeah, that is true. Maximum safe bearing capa uh, capacity provides adequate safety against settlement. No. So there we have to find there is another thing called allowable uh, safe bearing capacity, so we have to find that. So B is the incorrect statement, right? Allowable bearing capacity is reduced when water table rises to the footing level. Yes, we used to reduce that one. Uh, ultimate bearing capacity is estimated using Tesagi's bearing capacity equation. Yes, that is true. When performing an undrained al uh, analysis for a shallow footing on a saturated clay soil, bearing capacity factors are determined considering phi is zero. This is also true, right? So new syllabus students don't worry about this much. All syllabus people, they know uh, the, uh, fair, for a fair amount. Uh, statement B is the incorrect statement. So answer is second answer, right? Next, again, they're asking which statements are true. Uh, which of the, uh, when a part of uh, moist, when a pat of moist silt is squeezed on your palm, Moisture appears on the surface. No, moisture that, that goes into the sample, right? Not appearing. So A is wrong, right? Uh, moist sand can be molded to any shape since particles are held together by surface tension, right? That is true. High plasticity clay have, clay have high tendency to swell when saturated. Yes, swelling means they increase the volume, right? Uh, they have high tendency. That is also true. Uh, when dry sand is poured on a flat surface, its angle of repose is equal to angle of internal friction. Also, 
So you have to pay for these. So that is eleventh question. The answer is B, second option. The last part. Which of the following statements are true with regard to a submerged infinite sandy slope? Right. So this is slope question, not available for new syllabus. Even in the old syllabus, this is not uh, an easy part to understand from the book. I think I'll give the answer for this one. Uh, the factor of safety is determined based on the total stress analysis. No, because this is submerged, right? So in that case, we have to consider the effective stress analysis. So A is wrong. So if A is wrong, you can remove three options: first, fourth, and fifth. So only B and C are remaining, right? Uh, to ensure stability, the slope angle should not exceed angle of internal friction. Yes, if the slope angle is larger than angle of internal friction, there is a high chance of failure. Right? That's a general common sense idea here. So B is absolutely correct. The analysis is is assumes that the potential failure plane is parallel to the slope. Right? Uh, we do assume this one. Right? Uh, there is an assumption like this, so B and C are correct, right? Uh, we'll see the last statement also. When the slope is stable, the mobilized friction along the plane is proportional to the mass of solids above this plane. Yeah, the friction, mobilized friction, is proportional to the mass, right? The mobilized friction is something like the friction when the slope tends to slide. Right. When there is the at the tendency at the limiting state, the friction is said to be mobilized friction. Right? C D, phi D. We use symbols like that. So that depends on the mass of the solids. When that mass increases, there is a high tensity. Right? Um, um, so here, right? Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, it's stable, right? And uh, the mobilized friction along the plane is proportional to the mass of solids above this plane. No, okay. not in that, not that case. The limiting friction has some pro properties based on the friction angle of the uh, particles, right? So it, it depends on the particles friction angle, right? Not the mass, right? Sorry, sorry about that. Right. This is you can relate this to your A level limiting friction concept, right? F equal mu r, right? That mu something like mu, so that is that does not depend on the mass of the particle, right? It depends on that other properties like here that is a friction angle, right? So, so here the second answer is the question, right? So particularly I. Uh, had to mention one thing from this part B question here. I'll quickly just say that here in the part first question B part, prove that the right hand side of the above equation represents the bulk density of the soil. So, sir has asked a question to prove that the right hand side, right? So, in that case, you have to start from the right hand side and solve that and prove it as bulk density. So don't start from your left hand side and prove the equation. In that case, you won't get any marks, right? So you have to answer for this question, right? Not what you think, right? So you have to start from right hand side and do that. So be careful when you get uh, some questions like this, right? So we'll quickly discuss the last paper. I'll quickly run through this, right? 2012-13 paper. So when it comes to this first question, it is about limestone and sedimentary rock and those things. One of my poor subjects, geology. So this is absolutely, this is uh, some sort of geology part, right? Uh, limestone is a sedimentary rock that is formed from calcite. So that is true, right? Uh, basalt is formed from lava flows. That is true, right? Uh, nice is uh, formed under high temperature and pressure. That is also true. 
granite is a metamorphic rock type that is actually igneous rock type granite is that is false granite and gneiss nice are used as construction material that is also true i don't know how many of you all are doing geology whoever doing geology they know this part so uh, that is one of my <laughs> least favorite subject so i don't know that much uh, much to explain in that uh, question 2 uh, when dry sand is poured on flat surface a heap is formed the angle between the horizontal false, surface yeah. sorry in question number with question number 1 which answer is false yeah? uh, false is uh, statement d granite is a metamorphic rock type that is a false actually granite is an igneous rock type there are three rock types igneous sedimentary and metamorphic igneous is the correct rock type for granite right so obviously the new syllabus students you would be following engineering geology also parallelly so you know the answer for this one right uh, second question is based on angle of repose so angle of repose depends on particle shape yes it depends on particle shape angle of repose is less in well graded angle of repose is less in well graded uh, soils right um, well graded soil they will pack well so it would be less right uh, angle of repose is unique for a given granular material no you can't say that because now let's say when you are uh, when you have a densely packed one and a loosely packed one right so in that case the angle of repose will be different right you can uh, take a small container and pack it well and turn it upside down and if you take it out the cone formation will be different and pouring it randomly would be different right so you can't say for the given material the angle of repose would be unique right it would be different according to the packing right so angle of repose depends on the density of the granular material that is true so a b and d are true option c right so next again based on liquid limit and plastic limit atabeg limits atabeg limits are performed on fraction passing 0.425 yeah that is a code so that is correct liquid limit test and plastic index test is used to classify fine grain soils that is also true uh, soil with percent fines greater than 12 are classified based on liquid limit and plastic limit tests only um fine soil with percent fines greater than 12% 12 are classified based on liquid limit and plastic limit tests only so in that case we need atabeg limit tests to classify them properly right uh, the fine fraction as per british standard is determined based on yes 0.063 mm c that is also true right so i think option e is the correct answer for that one right so again uh, statement 4 right here there are two certain states of clay one is dispersed clay structure and flocculated clay structure google this you can find uh, what are those right uh, and i'll give the answer for this one uh, so question number 3 c statement is correct uh, i think uh, you have to do uh, liquid limit and plastic limit test to state about uh, and the dual symbol the second part if it is more than 12 percentage about the plasticity and all if you have to state that we can't state without liquid limit and plastic limit test isn't it mm -hmm. so i think we have to do that one mm -hmm. uh obviously we can state whether there is uh, some sort of fines but uh, to classify that fine we need liquid limit or plastic limit test without that we can uh, classify that right uh, only in the water gun oh that's that gives the uh, plastic the nature and all 
ഓ സോയിൽ വിത്ത് പെർസെന്റേജ് ഫൈൻസ് ഗ്രേറ്റർ ദാൻ ട്വൽവ് ആർ ക്ലാസിഫൈഡ് ബേസ്ഡ് ഓൺ ദ ലിക്വിഡ് ലിമിറ്റ് ആൻഡ് പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ലിമിറ്റ് ടെസ്റ്റ് ഓൺലി ഉണ്ട് ലബോറാണ് ഇതിൽ വന്ന് സി വി അനാലിസിസ് മറ്റേ അറ്റ വർക്ക് അതെല്ലാം ചെയ്യണമല്ലോ ഓൺലി ഉണ്ട് അപ്പൊ ഇത് രണ്ടേം വെച്ചുകൊണ്ട് ഞങ്ങൾ ക്ലാസിഫൈ പണിലാവേണ്ട മായില്ല അവൻ പാറ ഓ സോ വി പിടിതാണ് അപ്പൊ ട്വൽവ് പെർസെന്റ് എന്ത് സോളോക്കുള്ള ട്വൽവ് പെർസെന്റ് അവിടെ കൂടെ ഇറക്കുള്ള പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് നേച്ചറെ പറ്റി എല്ലാം സോളോണ് മാറുന്ന ലിക്വിഡ് ലിമിറ്റും പ്ലാസ്റ്റിക് ലിമിറ്റ് ടെസ്റ്റും കട്ടായി ചെയ്യണം ാം <laughs> <laughs> സോ അങ്ങനെ അന്ത സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെന്റ് ഒരു ഇഷ്യൂ ഇരിക്കും ദാറ്റ്സ് ഇൻ ഇഷ്യൂ ഇൻ ദാറ്റ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെന്റ് റൈറ്റ് ക്ലിയർ ആണ് കേട്ടോ സർ എന്താ സോല്ല വന്ന് വാസന വന്ന് ക്ലിയർ ആണ് കേട്ടോ ഓ സോ സോ ദ തിങ് ഈസ് ദ സോ ടു ബി ഫ്രാങ്ക് മോസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ പീപ്പിൾസ് സ്ട്രഗിൾ വിത്ത് ദ ലാംഗ്വേജ് റൈറ്റ് സോ ഹിയർ ഐ തിങ്ക് റാദർ ദാൻ സോയിൽ ഇൻ ദ സി പാർട്ട് സി സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെന്റ് ഈസ് എ സ്ട്രഗിൾ ഇൻ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് റൈറ്റ് Uh, here they say soil soils with percent fines greater than 12% are classified based on liquid limit and plastic limit tests only right so some might think they are asking about the fines only some might think they are asking about the soils right so according to that it might differ right so first of all i thought that should be correct right so now a person argued see since he argued in tamil some might some might not understand right the thing he was asking is now if we classify about fines what happens for the gravel and sand right so when they come into play so in that case we can't use liquid limit and plastic limit test we can't use atabag limit test right so there is an contradiction there so to play a safe game in that case we have to use option c right uh but there is a small issue uh, when when it comes to that uh, statement right uh so better to go with option c i think right uh when it comes to question number 4 uh, to get more idea about this dispersed clay structure and flocculated clay structure if you want to more uh, no knowledge in that uh, please google it you can find out uh, uh the uh details about that the false statement here in this is formations with dispersed clay structure are suitable to carry building loads right i think that is the false statement right so i couldn't find out further references on that right just google it uh, i think this is not they are in the book also right i couldn't uh, find some references in the book right uh so i am going to skip that part right uh statement 5 right question 5 specific gravity of sand grain is uh, mostly about 2.65 statement d right so which of the following parameters have values between 0 to 1 we discussed this already degree of saturation can be 0 to 1 void ratio can be higher than uh uh one relative density can be higher than one water content also can be higher than one right we we did discuss that in peat soils water content can be higher than one so if we consider that peat soil also here there is no answer for that only a is the possible value so if we omit that part uh, peat soil part we will get an answer that is a and d so definitely void ratio and relative density won't uh, be in the range of 0 to 1 they will have higher values but so, re- relative density varla andane yeah relative density and void ratio will be having greater than values 1 right so they both b and c are wrong right so relative density and idile or saman baadu undu sir and e maximum minus e over e e maximum minus e minimum undu solli oh mom ഓ അതിൽ വന്ന് ഇപ്പൊ നാങ്ങ മേലെയും ഈ മാക്സിമത്തിലേന്ത് ഈ ആ കളിക്കണം കീഴെ വന്ന് 
ഈ മാക്സിമത്തിലേന്റെ ഈ മിനിമത്തെ കളിക്കണം അപ്പൊ ഈ മാക്സിമത്തിലേന്റെ ഈ മിനിമത്തെ കളിക്കിറ വരുമാനം വന്ന് ഈ മാക്സിമത്തിലേന്റെ ഈ കളിക്കിറ വരുമാനത്തെ ഇവിടെ കൂടല്ലോ കീഴുള്ള വരുമാനം എന്താ എന്താ സെഷനിൽ ഇരിക്ക് പറഞ്ഞോ നാം പേജ് സോൾക്കാം നിങ്ങ അപ്പോ പുതുപുതാ പല സാഹചര്യ പല സെച്ചിരിക്കാൻ ആ സെഷൻ വന്ന് സോൾക്കാൻ എന്താ ഇതിലേ ഇടക്കല്ല എന്താ ഈക്വേഷനിൽ വന്ന് ഞങ്ങൾ വരുന്നത് സെഷൻ 6 വരുമാനം Yeah, there is a equation, different equation here. Uh, field ray relative density is only yeah, like yeah. density. So in session 6, the session name is in all syllabus book, it's session 6. I don't know what is the session in new syllabus. Uh, soil as a three-phase particulate system. That is the session. Soil and rock as a three-phase particulate system. In that... there is a specific equation for relative density if we discuss based on that the uh, thing the relative density value should be between 0 to 1 so a and c are the correct answers so anjavadukku enna answer avudu daniel anjavadukku 2.65 A and C are the correct answers for question number 6. Right. Uh, I have a question. But yeah. in the definition of relative density, we are calling that uh, the density of some, some, uh, some kind of thing divided by water density. I know, uh, that is for liquids. That is for... So here that is for solid. solid. So actually... i also made the same mistake when when i did this question so in that discussion only i i thought that the relative density would be greater than 1 but for soil that is not the case there is a different equation in old book it is in session 6 uh, in new book i think it would be session 3 or something that there is that equations part there is an equation for uh, relative density as e maximum minus e over e maximum minus e minimum so by that equation you can find out that uh, maximum density would be one only it can be higher than one for soil okay thank you okay uh next the in situ bulk density is given water content is given we have to dri- uh, find the dry density straightforward calculation 1.88 divided by 1 plus 0.85 so the answer is 1.73 right option d it's a fairly straightforward calculation right next the hydrometer test was performed on soil fraction passing uh, 0.063 mm cu following data were obtained during the hydrometer test the weight of the dry specimen is given the weight of the a one dried sample is given the percent fine is asking right so retained is given to you 121.5 grams is retained so 121.5 divided by 235.3 into 100 will give you the percent retained 100 minus percent retained will give the percent fine percent fine means percent passing right so those are straight forward calculations so the answer is 48.4 right so so i wanted to discuss this question number 9 bit uh, elaborately so here right they are saying there is a 1.5 1.5 square footing uh, is subjected to a allowable context pressure of 100 kilopascal the stress acting at a depth of 3 meter along the center line of the footing is the question right so here if you see in the bulb pressure bulb there are two section one is for square and one is for continu- continuous so we are seeing the square section in square section you have to assume a value select a value for b 
So since B is 1.5, I mean the uh, 14 dimension is 1.5, I am taking the value of B as 1.5. So in that case, we have to take the 1B line, right? So you can see the graph, you have to take the vertical line of 1B and you have to find the depth. So if B is 1.5, uh, our depth is 3. So in that case, depth, is, depth can be set as 2B. Right. So in the horizontal line, you have to find the line of 2B. Right. So unfortunately, I cannot write on these PDFs. Right. I'll try to write. I'll try to highlight. Right. So this is the vertical line. And this is the horizontal line. Right. So this is the intersection intersecting point. Now you can see the intersecting point. So we have to find draw the pressure bulb, which is going through that intersecting point. Right, we have to draw a pressure bulb which is going through that intersecting point in this manner. Right, so this value of this pressure bulb is definitely in between point 0.1 and point 0.5, so it is definitely in between that value. Right, so we know the contact pressure is 100. Right, if we take point 0.1 as the value, the contact pressure will would you, you would have to calculate and you have to multiply 0 0.1 and 100 it would be 10. If you take 0 0.05 it would be 5. So our value would be between 5 and 10 right we don't know the ex exact value but we definitely know it should be between 0 and 5 so uh, between 5 and uh, 10 right so we, you have only one value, such value that is eight. So answer is A. Anyone having Sir, issue? How do you go to B in horizontal line? So you know the depth is three meter, right? They are asking, they are saying yeah. the depth is three meter. So I, yeah. I selected the value for B as 1.5. Right. So if B is 1.5, that is 2B. 2B is 3. Can you explain again about the 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 into 100? I can't right. So now, can you see that intersecting point? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the, our pressure bulb should be intersecting through that line, right? We have to draw a pressure bulb, right? So if you draw a pressure bulb within that intersecting line, right? Your value should be between 0.1 and 0 0.05, right? Yes. Can you understand that part? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, now, can you see uh, if uh, when the contact when the pressure bulb value is 0.1, our pressure would be 10, 0 0.1 times 100. Okay. Right? When it is 0 0.05, our value would be 5. So it should be in between 5 and 10. So the possible answer is 8. Oh, okay, okay, I got it. Other things that cannot be the answer, right? Right. So this pressure bulb question, anyone else having issue in this pressure bulb question? Because this was the most requested one from me. Right, so there's no, no doubts. I think you all have understood this, right? Uh, so, Someone has asked to explain it again in Tamil or Sinhala or in English. What can you quickly do? Yeah, here if you see the footing size is 1.5, isn't it? Right? Footing size is 1.5. So I am assuming B as 1.5. Right. So in that case, right. Give me a second. I'll, I'll quickly delete this and I'll say uh, draw it again. Right. 
So I am assuming B as 1.5. I am selecting B to be 1.5. In that case, my size is 1.5. B is 1.5. So this is the square footings uh, vertical line, right? Our depth is 3 meter. So if B is 1.5, then 3 means it is 2B. So 2B is this portion, right? So in the square footing side. So we need to draw a pressure bulb in this intersecting location, right? There is no pressure bulb in a given diagram. So we have to draw it ourselves, right? So if you draw a pressure bulb, right? So it will be something like this. So it is definitely in between 0 0.1 and 0 0.05, isn't it? So what would be the maximum value? Maximum value would be 0 0.1. 0 0.1 means 0 0.1 times 100, that is 10. What would be the minimum value? That is 0.05 into 100, that is 5. So our answer should be within 5 and 10, right? So it is definitely not equal to 5 and definitely not equal to 10. So it is in between value. So only possible answer is 8, right? Hello, what is mean by continuous? No, other side, one side is square. Uh, uh, continuous side is continuous. Footings, like strip footings. The continuous ones. Ah, ah, okay. 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 2B can a line and the other one square pathing. I may decamar capena tenaking up it a pressure bulb back nan in the apima and the grand donator. Aka and the la, Aga value wake up calp me hoyan donate than value wake a methaning hurry at Oya to hoyan the bear. I may a yana scale like one of the gilabidan nan. Abe anivar in dano, eka dasema eka tie, dasema bindu a paha tie, medin tino agila. Dasema eka kian, a sea of arak, dasema eka kian a dahai. I see a variac dashima bindu a paha ki and a pahai, and a anivaring up a pressure regati and don a paha tie, the high tie, madding. Paha tie, the high tie, madden tian, a come option, a capita tian, ata vitrai. And I ekadama be answer regal. Right? There not. Hello, I am happy with the gut. B is equal to one point five kiran. Oh, well, B is equal to one kiran or corner of the kiran. No, I think it's a pressure. No, 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 it's a M possible when the bear mang hitane. It's a good way, Koneta Mayana one, it's auto at a pressure bulb, Beka Kandinda Mabani. May scale a little Iliate Anna one. Make an appe range again, range again, Atulene or Bulpe Kandinda win. Oh, it's auto have point one point five B and three B select Rana at a Bulpe Kandinda Mabani. And the number back. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Right. Excuse me, can I know the yeah. answer for something? Eight, I missed the question. Sorry. Question number seven. And eight. For question number seven, is answer D. And question number eight, it's uh, answer D again. So those are very simple questions, simple practical questions. Okay. Okay, okay. I missed the tape. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. No problem. Right. Uh, next one, question number 10. Which of the following statements are true? Zero air void curve relate water content to dry density of the soil when S equals zero. No, when S equals one, when it is fully saturated, right? So A is uh, a false statement, right? Uh, B, point on the compaction curve represents all three phases. That is right. Uh, zero air curve depends on specific gravity of the soil. That is also correct. 
the compaction curve intersects the zero alloy curve at higher water content that is false so b and c are correct right uh, only b and c are correct so no answer in the mcqs right b and c are correct right next thing identify Hello? the relationship for the following yeah uh b Point on compaction curve. So this is about compaction curve, not zero air weight curve. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, next eleventh one. Identify the correct relationship for the give following three earth pressure coefficient. Right for new syllabus students, this is not in the syllabus. For all syllabus people, they know this somewhat. So this is the answer. That is first answer. Always active coefficient is lower than uh, the coefficient of rest condition. Then highest one is the uh, Kp, that is passive coefficient. So uh, there are a few equations. Uh, it's a fairly simple part. They know that one, right? So finally, the last question for today's session. A uh, saturated soil element in a uniform soil stratum is located 5 meter below the ground surface. The water table is 1 meter below the ground surface. Uh, which of the following statement are true? The element is subjected to vertical stress only. No. Actually, there are horizontal stresses also. There are three different states. One is active, one is passive, another one is at rest. According to the state, they will be experiencing different, different lateral stresses also, right? So that is actually false. Not only vertical stress is a false statement. A pore pressure of uh, 39.2 kilopascal act on the element. Yeah, 4 meter of water times 9.81. So it is correct, 39.2. The average total stress on the soil element is proportional to its depth. Yes, when the depth increases, the total stress obviously increases. So C is also correct. Horizontal and vertical stress directions are considered as principal stresses. Yes, that is also correct. So B, C and D are correct. So answer is option D, right? So, so far we have discussed nearly 60 MCQs, right? So if you see these MCQs are somewhat fairly easy. There were only four or five confusing MCQs which we had to discuss for a long time, right? So in that sense, you can understand you would have gained the knowledge that mcqs are easy and if you spend about half an hour for this mcq that is enough right you can do this within half an hour sometimes some might do that much more quickly then uh, use the other time for the part two right so part two is a bit tricky than mcqs right so if you have any doubts i can give about 10 minutes you can ask. Will you be discussing any B part type questions later before the exam? Uh, uh, to be frank, I don't have time. So I am having another exam on 6th. I am having Geotech. I am having 9th. Uh, I am having Mathematics. 11th, I am having Survey. So in between, I have to be in Colombo for a particular uh, work. So I think I don't have time to discuss part B questions. I did some questions. Uh, especially the last year paper, right? This paper, this paper, I did the complete discussion and I have uploaded it to YouTube. So if you want, you can uh, go through that uh, session, right? That video. Uh, YouTube then. Sorry? You have, you have that uh, discussion video on YouTube? Yeah, I have that, right? It's in the channel. It's in our channel. You can see there. And... Uh, other than that, I have some certain videos which I did a few months back in uh, consolidation. You can find it also in the channel. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I have asked uh, about uh, that that motorcycle problem. In yeah, the... yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, in the textbook, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, let me quickly share that so you can see the, what is happening there. So actually in that thing, sir has 
discussed uh, uh, anti clockwise and things and uh, the question is done in clockwise that is why it's a bit confusing yeah. right, give me a second i'll quickly open the textbook so okay, in the new syllabus book what is the page number Sixty eight, sixty eight, right? Uh, this one, this question, right? Yeah, here the B part is the trouble that was the uh, issue, right? So here they are, sir has marked alpha, right? Sir has marked this alpha, and actually he has calculated the angle this one, right? Okay, yeah, he calculated angle at 29.74. Yeah, uh, 29 point. Yeah, alpha is uh, calculated as 29 point seven four, right? Yeah. Uh, so I think you can find out what the value for alpha, right? That won't be an issue for you, right? Mm, the problem comes when it comes to this 180 minus two theta part, right? Yeah, then he already gets 59.9. I don't know how. What is the 59.9 value? Yeah, so I'll try to mark this. I think this is that 180 minus 2 theta part. This angle. So I have taken this one as that 180 minus 2 theta. And calculated 2 theta. In that sense, I guess so that one. So in that sense, let's see, 30 by 60.5, so 30 by 60.5. It is 2 theta, 2 theta is 119.7, so theta is 59.9. So, uh, did you get the same value for that alpha, 29.74? Uh, yes, I get the value for alpha is 29.74. For that, uh, that. After getting that value, we already know that the, the, the B part, they are asking that the stress on the plane inclined at 35 uh, from the horizontal. Then that means mm -hmm. we already uh, need to draw it in the more circle in the anticlockwise direction to the from the 70 minus 30, from the 70 minus 30, we are in, uh, drawing it from the anticlockwise direction. Mm -hmm. Normally, normally we draw mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. our normal way we usually do it in that manner, no? Yeah. Here, yeah, that uh, 180 minus 2 theta is the issue, right? The angle sigma 1 makes with sigma xx. So what is this sigma xx? I think it may be come from the 67 paper, 67 page. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So already derivation, some kind of equation there. Then if okay. you think that, that the old derivation equation yeah. directly, yeah. But, yeah. but that is not... So here, sir, has marked his two theta and all here. Yeah, that two theta mark for them. Uh, so that is the angle between uh, the given plane and the normal plane, right? Okay, given plane and normal, yeah. Normal, right? So it's uh, he is doing in that manner, right? 
So I think here you have to draw that 35 degree plane, right? So the stress plane on the inclined at 35 degree from the horizontal, right? From the horizontal, it is inclined by, so let's say something like this, right? So this yellow plane is this one here, this small figure, right? And uh, this sigma n is normal to that one, all right? So from the horizontal stress sigma x x, the angle between that uh, horizontal stress sigma x x and the normal stress on the inclined plane, right? So that is theta. No, I think uh, due to the interpretation, I think uh, I can, we can't see the uh, exactly what you are drawing. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Maybe we can see if you upload in YouTube. Maybe we can okay, get the idea about. Okay, okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. I'll. I'll then talk through it. I think you can find out there. And if you have any issues, we'll discuss later then. Okay. Still, if you have any issues, we can uh, discuss later, right? So here, the angle between the sigma xx and the for normal plane, uh, the for force normal to the plane, right? So the angle between those two is taken as theta. So if that is taken as theta in the soil element, that would be 2 theta in uh, the... Uh, that would be 2 theta in the Mohr circle, right? So we know that theory. Uh, so in that case, here if it is 2 theta, so 180 minus 2 theta. 180 minus 2 theta means this one, right? The angle, the angle sigma 1 makes with angle sigma x, x, right? So this is sigma x, x and sigma 1, right? 180 minus 2 theta is 30 by 60.5. So that is 2 theta and 59.5. This is measured clockwise, right? So the angle sigma 2 makes is... Um, 59.9 plus 90 so I think uh, sir has done what sir has done is so after so you as for our traditional way right we know we use a traditional way from our strength of material right we used to rotate it in and uh, in the direction by two times so if it is 35 we used to rotate it by 70 90. right and we find that point okay. and we find the stresses right so this two theta thing is uh, the angle between that particular plane, right? The angle between that particular plane and our horizontal, right? That is that two theta thing, right? Mm, I'll try to draw this. So we'll see. We have a more circle like it. So this is our line. Right? We had a certain value here and a certain value here. But I don't know whether you all can see this, but uh, I try to upload this. Right? So that, so after rotating that 70 degree, we'll get a plane something like this right here. So this would be our stress sigma n and uh, our uh, shear stress would be some certain value phi, right? So I think so I has taken this as that 2 theta, right? Okay, uh, yeah. So this was our alpha, right? Yes. Uh, now the issue is how comes that 180 minus... 2 theta sine 180 minus 2 theta is equal to 30 by 65.5. That was the deficient, right? And also, sir, already marked it in the local direction. But when we are considering the 
35 degree of angle from the horizontal mm -hmm. that may be going from the anticlockwise direction from the yeah I, no no the, uh, sir has taken this theory from that proof here that uh, uh, that figure 9.2 about, about it, okay. Yeah, from that figure, so I have taken that one, right? And uh, combined both the theories and uh, given the answer, right? Yeah. So, my guess, I hear they have, so I have marked that 2 theta and all. Can you, can you just move to uh, bottom of that page a few? Uh, yes, I can see. Yeah, in that, so I have marked those 2 theta and all. I think uh, in the in this year first assignment uh, sir already asked this kind of question and okay, he already yeah, okay. gave the 25 mark for this question but I, uh -huh, I, okay. I remember one only only one person get the 25 out of 20 and other, uh -huh, other okay, old, old, okay. Old, then that's when uh, if we are drawing the more circle especially this kind of plane membrane uh, so, yes. I, uh, so you are saying that sir is expecting this method? I don't know exactly, but the problem is oh, okay. no okay. one get the marks for the uh, this plane and plane question because uh, everyone has. Uh -huh. a, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I think most of this one has a 15, 20 high out of 15, uh, 6, 17.5, 19 that, are, that kind of marks. So you can handle this question in other method also using poll, right? That's that would be another easier way to do this question. And and the next method I would say is our traditional way which we do in uh, using the more circle that yeah, yeah. Uh, two so, theta thing. Uh, this would be uh, this seems a bit difficult, right? Uh, the pole one is much easier to find the pole if we have a stress element and if we have the forces, the shear forces and the thing. So let's say this is the plane A and this is plane B and this is plane, this is for the plane B. To do that, at point A we have a vertical surface, so we draw a vertical surface. I draw another color, we have a vertical surface. At point B we have a horizontal surface, so we have to draw a horizontal surface. So both meet at this area, so this would be the pole. But uh, so I have uh, easy calculations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, come on again. ओहेटा <laughs> 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 They already given. We must have to calculate the time factor. They already given the uh, degree of consolidation. Or if the below is, uh, you must have to use this this kind of uh, time factor equation. And uh, already, if, if it is above the t is equal to one point seven eight, that kind of equation. But what mm -hmm. happens if the degree of consolidation is equal to sixty? Sixty. Oh, exactly so, sixty. Exactly sixty. So there is a small. Uh, I have a small hunch. So I. Uh, that came into mind when I was studying, but since when we are studying, we, we omit some things, right? So I didn't bother about that that much. 
will quickly see if i could find out a solution for that let's uh, give me a minute i'll i'll try to figure it out i have a small lunch right a small idea if that is true then that may be possible right no that is not possible then so i thought at 60 both the equation should be same value should give same value but that is not the case uh, it has different values for both from the both equations right okay. you calculate in uh, using both the equations yeah, yeah. Uh, then it will come uh, different value different I values think, i think they must say must need to mention If we, if the degree of consolidation is sixty, we must have this this kind of figures. I don't. Yeah. Think. Then we have we'll to uh, take. So it should be given to us. I think uh, which condition we have to uh, select. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe in some times, maybe if we are doing some specialization in geotechnical engineering or some sort of that in our, I uh, maybe in our postgraduate things, there might be some theory. I don't know actually. uh for the time being under our bachelor degrees i think uh, they should mention right uh and there is a curved graph for, for this also uh sometimes we have to use those graphs uh, i don't know which year there was in one past paper there was a question with a table right i can't remember the year are this one uh this is 2013 14 1213 sorry 2012 in part 2 question there is a chart question number 5 okay time settlement okay yeah so in in if they give something like this we can do that part if father then this uh, they have to mention to us okay thank you okay very much okay anyone else having any questions i can wait another three more minutes yeah yeah i have it out uh, yeah. consolidation la vande and the initial settlement sorry இனிஷியல் செட்டில்மெண்ட் காண்ட இருக்கு தானே அது வந்து அந்த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வந்து அந்த T1 பாயிண்ட் எடுப்போம் அதுல நாலு டைம்ஸ் வந்து T2 எடுப்போம் சரியா அதுல அந்த X பாயிண்ட் எடுக்கறேன் தானே அப்ப X பாயிண்ட் வந்து X பாயிண்ட் அது இந்த இன்னொரு மூணு அங்க X பாயிண்ட் அந்த பாயிண்ட்க்கு மேலே எடுக்கறேன் ஆமா ஓ ஓ அப்ப அந்த இனிஷியல் செட்டில்மெண்ட் எவ்வளவு வந்து கேட்டா அந்த ரெண்டு டிஸ்டன்ஸ்க்கு மான தூரத்தை கொடுக்கறதா இல்ல X இந்த ஒரு 2X இந்த பெருமானம் இல்ல X இந்த பெருமானம் இல்ல அந்த நீங்க X இந்த பெருமானம் மேல் எடுத்துட்டு அந்த டெல்டா 0னு போடுவீங்க தான ஆமா டெல்டா 0 தான் உங்களோட இனிஷியல் செட்டில்மெண்ட் ஆ ஓகே இந்த இனிஷியல் செட்டில்மெண்ட் வர்றதுக்கான காரணம் வந்து அந்த பர்టిక్యులர் லோட் இன்கிரிமென்ட்க்கு முன்னால நீங்க பயன்படுத்துன லோட் இன்கிரிமென்ட்ஸ் இருக்கு தானே அதனால வந்தது அதனால வர்றதும் அது அதனால ரிமூவ் ஆகنا யார்னால வர்றது தான் அது அதுதான் உங்க இனிஷியல் செட்டில்மென்ட் ஓகே அப்ப அந்த பிரைமரி கன்சல்டேஷன் காண்டிறதுக்கு வந்து 100 ல டெல்டா 0க்கும் டெல்டா 100க்கும் இடையில இருக்க வித்தியாசம் தான் உங்களோட பிரைமரி செட்டில்மென்ட் ஓகே செகண்டரி செகண்டரி வந்து உங்கட கிராஃப் பை டு ஒரு இடத்துல முடியும் தானே அது முடியறதும் அந்த டெல்டா 100க்கு முடையில இருக்கத தான் நீங்க எடுக்க வரும் தியரிட்டிகலி ஏனா தியரிட்டிகலி நம்ம பிரைமரியும் செகண்டரியும் செப்பரேட்டா தானே பார்க்கறோம் ஆனா உண்மையுமே அப்படி நடக்காது பிரைமரியும் செகண்டரியும் சேர்ந்து தான் நடக்கும் உண்மையுமே சோ அத கண்டுபிடிக்கிறதுக்கு என்ன செய்யணும்னா உங்கட கிரீப் இருக்கு தானே அதாவது செகண்டரி கன்சோலிடேஷனுக்கான லைன் இருக்கு தானே அத பின்னால எக்ஸ்டெண்ட் பண்ண நீங்களா இருந்தா அது வந்து செட்டில்மென்ட் ஆக்சிஸ் ஒரு இடத்துல கட் பண்ணும் ஓகே அப்படி கட் பண்ற அந்த இடத்துல இருந்தே உங்கட செகண்டரி செட்டில்மென்ட் ஸ்டார்ட் ஆகிரும் ஓகே சரியா ஆ மத்தது வந்து இந்த சாயில் டெப் டி காண்டிறதுக்கு தான் एवरेज சாம்பிள் ஹைட் அதுக்கு வந்து அந்த 
டி நோட்ல இருக்கிற செட்டில்மெண்டையும் டி அந்த எண்ட் ஆகிற டைம்ல இருக்க அந்த கடைசி எங்க கேர்வ் போய் முடியிற இடம் இருக்கு தானே அந்த இடத்துல இருக்கிற செட்டில்மெண்டை கண்டு அதை ரெண்டால பிரிச்சு ரிங் ஹைட்ல இருந்து கழிக்கிறதா இல்ல பிரைமரி செட்டில்மெண்ட் முடியிற இடத்துல இல்ல இல்ல நீங்க சொன்ன சாரி எண்ட் ஆகிற இடத்துல இருக்கு <laughs> 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 அந்த வைட் ரேஷியோ தான் செகண்டரி கான்சோலிடேஷனுக்கு ஈனோ ஓகே ஓட் சரி அப்ப உங்கட மத்த யூசுவலா பாவிக்கிற ஈனோட் இல்ல அதுக்கு வேற ஈனோட் நீங்க கண்டுபிடிச்சு எடுக்கணும் நான் பழைய வீடியோ ஒன்றுல போட்றேன் அந்த ஒரே ஒரு இயர்ல உங்களுக்கு ஒரு கேள்வி வந்துருச்சு அப்படி பேப்பர்ல ம் நான் பழைய வீடியோ ஒன்றுல இருக்கும் இந்த YouTubeல இருக்கும் கிடக்கும் முடியுது <laughs> 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 வந்து <laughs> 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 100 days illama adu vandidile or 80 la cut 80 days la cut pannadha endra sonna adu approximately 100 nu solli edukalama approximately 100 nu edukonu maarundha slope sariyana sinna slope a irundha neenga edukalam neeli flat line flat line maadhiri irundhuchuna edukalam ana appadi illama irundha appadi edukkalam ena appadi 100 ku kittava edutha and lock la potu seiyiradhu easy illa adukandi appadi edukkala oh illa illa adha calculator tharaangale appo appadi edukkala adhu ah okay okay ah matter the and graph la vandu 100 line adikkiradhu or tangent line undu kiru vandane adhu vandha and curve mudiyira and thongal la irundhu tangent edukonuma illa adhu vandu சொன்ன <laughs> அந்த கிராஃப் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ற அந்த பாயிண்டே வந்து டெல்டா நோட் னு இருக்குது அப்படி தானே அதாவது ஜீரோக்கு மேல போனா என்ன நடக்கும் தானே கேக்குறீங்க மைனஸ் செட்டில்மென்ட் னு ஒன்னு வராது தானே அப்ப ஜீரோ தான் உங்கட மினிமம் வேல்யூ அப்ப நீங்க டெல்டா ஜீரோ வந்து ஜீரோவாவே இருக்கும் ஆஹா ஓகே ஓகே கிராஃபுக்கு மேல மைனஸ் னு பெருமானம் போட்டு தந்தாலும் நான் வந்து ஜீரோ தான் ஜீரோ தான் என்ன செட்டில்மென்ட் மைனஸ்ல நடக்காது தானே மைனஸ்ல நடக்கணும் மாறந்தா உங்க சாம்பிள் டைலைட் ஆகணும் டைலைட் ஆகணும் மாறந்தா வலியும் கூடணும் அப்படியா இருந்தா ஷியரிங் ஏதாவது நடந்தா தான் அப்படி நடக்கும் கன்சோலிடேஷன்ல ஷியரிங் நடக்கிறதுக்கான வாய்ப்பு இல்ல அதுக்கு நீங்க நெக்ஸ்ட் இயர் உங்களுக்கு ஒரு பிராக்டிகல் நீங்க ஜியோடெக்ல ஒரு பிராக்டிகல் இருக்கு அது செய்யறப்ப அது உங்களுக்கு வரும் ஷியரிங் இதுல வரதானே சார் அந்த ஜூசி டெஸ்ட்ல வரதானே என்ன ஆ யூசில வரும் நீங்க <laughs> 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 உங்களுக்கு
Direxia test or oh, shear box test. Hello. Oh. Oh, sir, I have a book on the consultation. I have a settlement on the minus. I have a minus. I have a minus. ஒரேட்டில்மெண்ட் <laughs> 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 சாதாரணமா நம்ம எக்ஸ்பேன்ஷனை தானே பாசிட்டிவ்னு கன்சிடர் பண்றது இது இது செட்டில்மெண்ட்டா அதுக்கு எதிரான விஷயம் தானே அதனால தான் இந்த மைனஸ் அதாவது வைண்ட மறைபக்கம் மற்றபடி செட்டில்மெண்ட் அவர் மைனஸ் ஆயிருக்கல அப்ப நீ பெருமானம் போடக்குள்ள என்ன போடணும் நீங்க பெருமானத்தை கொண்டு அது மட்டும் போட்டு செஞ்சீங்களா இருந்தா சரி நீ இந்த மறை சிம்பல் வந்து கிராஃப்ல இருக்க சிம்பல் அதாவது எக்ஸ் அச்சு வை அச்சுல இருக்க அச்சுகளுக்கான குறியீடுகள் தான் இது right uh, i hope that's all right anyone else having any issue can you quickly ask it's getting too late if you all are having any not any no any issues i can wind up என்னது <laughs> 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 பாப்பம் எனக்கு சரி ஞாபகம் இல்லை பாப்பம் வர்டிகல் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் இன்க்ரீஸ் பிலோ ஆபிட்ரரி ஷேப் ஏரியா இப்போ இது ப்ரெஷர் பல்ப் வந்து உங்களுக்கு ஒரு ரெகுலர் ஷேப் ஏரியாவுக்கு கீழே இருக்க ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் டிஸ்ட்ரிபியூஷனுக்கான வரைபடம் தானே ப்ரெஷர் பல்ப் இது யாதாயினும் ஒரு பரப்புக்கு அது முக்கோணியாக இருக்கலாம் இல்லை ஏதாச்சும் ஒரு ஒரு ஒட் ஷேப்பாக இருக்கலாம் அந்த மாதிரி இதுகளுக்கு கீழே இருக்க இதுகளை காண்றதுக்கு தான் இது சரி இது நம்ம யூஸ் பண்றது இல்ல அதுக்கு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் அதுக்காக அந்த ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் அந்த டிஸ்ட்ரிபியூட் பண்ற அந்த பாத் எல்லாம் பாத்து வாங்கணும் அப்படி வேற அதங்களுக்கு இல்ல நான் நினைக்கிறேன் நம்ம பேச்சுலர்ஸ் லெவலுக்கு இது இருக்கும்னு நினைக்கிறேன் நான் கிரேஸ் மாஸ்டர் இன்ட்ரோ இன்ட்ரோ듀ஸ் பண்றதுக்காக காட்டி இருப்பார் போல இதுல அந்த பரப்ப வரையணும் நான் நினைக்கிறேன் சரி எனக்கு சரியா ஞாபகம் இல்ல நான் இது பெருசா ட்ரீஃப் அப் பண்ணல இன்னொ <laughs> 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 நாங்களுக்கு 
போகானி கம்பவுண்ட் எல்லாத்தையும் எடுத்து போட்டுதான் நாங்கள் இதுல பாக்குறோம் அப்ப இதுல வந்து இன்னோர்கானிக் தானங்க எம்எல்ஏ ஓர்கானிக் அது ஓ எம்எல்ஏஎம்ஹெச் நீங்க சிஹெச் ஓ அதெல்லாம் பா யூஸ் பண்ணலாம் ஓஹெச் கொண்டாரணும்ன்ற அவசியம் இல்ல ஓ அது வந்து நாங்க இப்ப ஓர்கானிக் இதுல வந்து இங்க யூஸ் பண்ணல தான் சிஹெனாலிஸ் அதெல்லாம் ஓ ஓ ஓ வாஷ் பண்ணி தான எல்லாம் எடுக்கிறது சோ அது நோ ப்ராப்ளம் அடுத்து தான் யூஸ் பண்றது ஓ right anything else shall i wind up then hello uh, oh oh uh, in pressure ball question do we only get square footing questions no you can get continuous footing also in that case also same idea you have to use the same idea to handle the question okay do we get any uh, different shapes like uh, rectangles uh, rectangular shape footings like that uh rectangular shape uh, it's not possible isn't it because it's square footing no and we have only for square and continuous one so oh, i don't yes. think you'll get uh, uh a rectangular one if it is in rectangular one uh i don't think so a rectangular one would be possible right okay okay thank you okay Okay, shall I then wind up? Right, okay, all the best for your exams. Then, Thank you, sir. Uh, do well. Hope this was helpful. Okay, okay.